have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Welcome to TV Guidance Counselor. As always, I am Ken Reed. I am your TV Guidance Counselor. And my guest this week is Samara Johnson, uh, professionally known as Sam J. Very funny comedian here in Boston. We did some shows at the Riot LA Comedy Festival a few months back. She is one of the newer comics here that I think is really great. I think you'll enjoy our conversation. She is very interesting. And I will see you at the end of the show. So please welcome my guest this week, Sam J. Welcome to the home. I'm excited. This is uh, it's a little messier than normal. But it's, it's comfy fun. though. Is it comfy? Yeah. All right, as, long as, yeah. as long as it's comfy. You trekked out to the suburbs for this. Yeah. It, took a train. Took a train and then a, a car ride. Which was a longer car ride than I expected. It was slightly longer and I did make you wear a blindfold just so that you couldn't <laughs> lead people to this house. And I was also kind of nervous. I was like, oh, I don't know where I'm going. Like, where are we right now? Stoneham? This is Stoneham, yeah. Okay, yeah. I've never been. I don't think I've ever been out here. I didn't realize it was that close to a... Uh, Malden? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A lot of people don't, and we're hoping people continue not to see our house <laughs> values continue to be as high as they are. Uh, that's not true. But, uh, <laughs> so you picked it, you were kind of looking at the late 90s, but then you landed on the week of September 24th to the 30th, 1994. Yes. I, I thought it was, that was good because my age, I was 12 at the time. Right. So I think I was, like, into a, a wide range of TV at this point. Yeah, and that's usually sort of people's sweet spot as, as I was saying earlier right. is that because you're you kind of want to be an adult so you'll watch more like adult type things yeah. but then you also really sometimes secretly watch a lot of kid stuff as well right and then my understanding of even the adult stuff was like not what I understand of it now right because right. I, my mind you know I just was I was young I didn't really know but right. I knew it was like stuff yeah something was going on yeah and you also are sort of too young to go out and hang out with kids a lot at night exactly that's but, why I also I picked uh, September I picked the fall because I was like, I'm, you know, pretty it's rigorous school. schedule. Yeah. I got school, so I'm home. I'm actually watching TV. The summer, I'm not really watching as much. You right. know what I mean? Well, there's not as much new stuff on either. Right. It's, it's usually reruns. So I was like, so yeah. So 12, this is what are you, time. sixth grade? 12, I am in the seventh. Is it seventh grade? Yes. I can never remember. Yes. Yeah, so 94, I was a freshman in high school. I'm two years older than you. So, yeah, it would have been seventh grade. Yeah, I was okay. in seventh grade. I went to Catholic school. Did it set, was the Catholic school like K through high school? Yep. Okay. It was one of those schools where we all knew each other from, I started right. in first grade and then went to school with the class. same kids. Okay. And went to classes with the same kids until you have I graduated. In school? No, I, my brothers were way older than me. I have two brothers, but they're like, my brother's close to 50 and my other brother's like 45. Okay. All right. So, I was kind of a solo. It's probably good that they weren't in the school with you. Yeah. I would have said <laughs> very bad things about them. I was pretty solo. So, Full on all girls Catholic school? No, it was the high school was all girls, but okay. the K through um, junior high was you know co-ed. Junior high went to eighth grade. Yes. Okay, so you had two years left before you had to go all girls. Yeah, but then the cafeteria burned down. What? And <laughs> how did that happen? I don't know. The cafeteria burned down because the the high school kids were the only kids that had access to the cafeteria. Okay. Um, we'd only have the cafeteria if it was like a pizza day or something. So the buildings were connected? They were kind of. They were on okay. the same property but not connected. Okay. And the cafeteria was like in the middle of okay. the properties. And um, we would only get cafeteria time like if it was a big pizza day for like the whole eighth grade or How something would you, like that. When would you, where would you eat lunch? Oh, oh you had to bring your own lunch. Would you just eat in the classroom? Yep, you'd eat at your desk. So, you know, you'd pull your lunch out your out That's your horrible. You desk. had no lunchroom. No. Oh, that, we, we ate in our classrooms. Sad. We ate in our classrooms from first grade till eighth grade. So you stayed in the classroom all day? Pretty much. We rotated to like two, three classes. Did you have a cloakroom? Yes, we did. <laughs> did they call it a cloakroom? They did. And yeah, that's always weird. One time, like, uh, I was in the coat room and I was going in my bag. 
and a roller, a sponge roller, came out my bag. Yeah. But this girl said it was a tampon, and I was in fifth grade, and it made my fifth grade year terrible. Because the Catholics were like, you're not allowed to have a period. You're going to hell. And like all the kids were just <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God, yeah. Mario has a tampon. Because kids are horrific monsters. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, kids are the worst people And I was like, I don't have a tampon. And it was just... Yeah. It made, it made fifth grade tough. It, so they never forgot it the whole year? No. You were just praying all year that someone would do something worse, worse than, than, than have that. a fake tampon in their bag. Right. Like someone would puke or, or poop their pants or something like something, that. Something, right? Yeah. We had a kid that uh, came into the cloakroom one day in kindergarten and projectile vomited completely just no one knew why just everywhere like bright pink whoa it looked like bright pink oatmeal whoa yeah the janitor was very unhappy yeah that's about crazy. the sawdust he had to put down on yeah. that thing it was very unpleasant that's, that's, that's so crazy. are you were you very religious no um i wasn't catholic which was a big deal <laughs> you know at catholic schools you can be catholic or you can be what they call like a lay person or like right. a non-catholic person right right and usually your tuition is higher because you're not a part of the parish, you're not a part of the church. Really? They'll yeah. charge you more? Our people are like, no, I'm really into it. Can I have a discount? Well, a lot of people go and send their kids to communion because they just don't want to pay right. the amount. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's but, um, crazy. Yeah, so I was a Catholic and I, I hadn't gone through communion or anything right. like that. But, um, I mean, you still have to learn. Like, you know, you still have to go to religion class. So you, right. you learn a bunch of this stuff. My mom wasn't very religious. Like, she used to always say, remember, religion is right. the opiate of the masses. Right. She was one of those That's type of people. That's pretty progressive for your mother. <laughs> but it was just a better school than you would have right. if you went to public school. Exactly. And it was cheaper than, like, a private, private right, school. Right, right. So it was, like, right in the middle, you know? Where did you grow up again? Um, Dorchester. So you grew up in Dorchester. Yeah. Okay. As my mother did as well. Not the same year. Uh, <laughs> it was a little <laughs> earlier than that. Yeah, Catholic school always just terrified. All my uncles went to Catholic school. Actually, my, my mother's whole side of the family. And it uh, did not do them any good. It was a good experience. I, I feel like I was smart. By the time I got to high school, because it was crazy. Like, okay, so basically I was a terror in my school. Like, okay. They thought, at one point they told my mother I was possessed by the devil. Really? Yeah. Did they recommend um, an exorcism? They did. Because I used Hold on a second. Seriously. They actually recommended Yeah, an they exorcism? told her I needed to go see the priest and I needed to get an exorcism and then I needed to take communion because Was that because you were left handed? No, it was because I was <laughs> <laughs> I was just I used to just like to mess with them. Right. I wasn't really bad. Like, I didn't fight kids and stuff. Right. I just pushed their sensibilities a lot. Gotcha. Like, I would do stuff like... You'd question uh, their... Mo- question, their, uh, yeah. and uh, I would go into church, and I, when we would stick our head in the holy water, yep. I'd always act like it burnt me. Yes. And just stuff that... Well, that will lead someone to believe you are possessed <laughs> by the devil. Just stuff to, like... Yeah. And my mother's just like, will you just cut it out? Like, I know nothing's wrong with you, and I know you think this is funny. Right. But they really think, like, something's wrong with you. How did you resolve that? Um, it never really got resolved. Just kind of blew over? Yeah, they kind of just were like, there's nothing we can do with this kid. So you didn't take communion? So I didn't take communion, and they, they kind of, they one time they tried to force communion on me at one mass. How would you force communion the Two on nuns me? held me, and the other one tried to like put it in my mouth. It was crazy. Two nuns held you, and yeah. nuns tried to put that cardboard styrofoam mm-hmm. awful crap Because they in said I was just like, they really felt like I was possessed. Um, but is it, <laughs> isn't it blasphemous if someone who hasn't gone through uh, whatever the first communion crap is? I guess they felt is? I was so far gone. On that, that I just needed anything. I just needed something. I, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy to me. I wonder if those women, the women who can't have children, maybe biologically, <laughs> but at least by religion, who are probably the last people on earth that should be in charge of children, uh, really thought that. Like, I wonder if they really thought you were possessed by the devil. And they, that, they thought, like, uh, they, they thought something was wrong with me. I remember I asked the priest, because <laughs> we'd have religion, the priest would come in on Fridays yeah. in the religion class, and you could ask him any question you wanted. So I asked him... You could if, ask him any question you wanted that you were okay with having all the other kids hear you ask. Right. <laughs> right. So I asked if... Uh, if you are a man, a woman who got a sex chase to be a man, could right. you then become a priest? Because only men can be priests. Right, right, right. And that wasn't received very well, and I got thrown out of religion class. What was the answer? He didn't answer me. He Did just he turned just really go? red. His name was Father Daly. He turned really. Oh, Father Daly. He turned really red, <laughs> and um, they asked me to leave. For good or just that day? Just for the rest of the day. I had to sit in the principal's office. Were you... So, for people that don't know Sam, you are a lesbian. Yes. Uh, Were you aware of that then? No, I really thought I liked boys. I had a huge crush on Dylan from 90210. Okay. Um, Most lesbians I had a heart. Yeah, I had a heart Dylan pillow. Okay. Um, So you weren't feeling like... Because there's a lot of anti-gay rhetoric in that. I had crushes on girls, but I didn't know that that's what was happening. Right, right. I just thought, these girls are really cool, and I like being around them, and like... 
I remember like I had a friend, Kimberly Lydon. I would like color her like pictures, right. you know, and she'd be like, oh, your coloring is getting so much better. And I yeah. just like liked her. Yeah. And now I look back and I'm like, I totally yeah, liked her. her. Yeah, you but like I, liked her. Yeah, but when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, she's <laughs> awesome, you know? Do you think that, the reason I bring it up is because I wonder if the nuns who probably were also some lesbians mixed in there, <laughs> uh, kind of picked up on that and that was what they were thinking was you were possessed, you know, I don't know. Oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe. What if you weren't really manifesting that till later? I don't think I was. They were, And they were just really like evil old ladies. Like they were really like yeah. spiteful and just angry and stuff. Cause we had a teacher, Ms. Wait, nuns? <laughs> yeah, right. We had a teacher, Miss Stanziani and um, she An was Italian a- Italian nun? She was a lay, she was a lay woman. So, so oh, okay. you could work at the school too. Yeah. You weren't Catholic. But they had separate rules for you. woman sounds like something that none would call a <laughs> prostitute. Basically, that's how they treated her. Because yeah. she was really, really pretty. And she was tall. And she had, like, perfect olive skin. Right. And sometimes she'd wear a tennis skirt. Because on Wednesdays, she played tennis with her fiancé. Okay. So she'd wear her tennis stuff to school. I like it. Which I don't really think is appropriate. No. But it was really hot. But I'd watch and that show. I totally had a crush on her. Yeah. And I would buy her, like, the best gifts on, um, like, bring a gift to your teacher day. What would you get teacher it? appreciation. One time I got her a letter, like a book. Book, um, page holder yep. that was like gold plated with her name that's Stanziani jeez what did she how yeah. did she receive that she would just be like oh you're so sweet thank you and I'd just be like oh yay yeah, yeah I'm really like I'm totally in I was in love with her yeah totally so did you go to the Catholic high school no what happened that's, that's where I was getting with this so by the time I get to 8th grade I have a reputation in the Catholic schools of Boston of just being like this terror. So your name's on a list in the archdiocese yes of like she is a terror of yeah. a kid so I couldn't go to my girl's school because it had burnt down. Right. So I went to St. Clair's, which I think was in Rosendale somewhere okay. at the time. And I was going through the open house of St. Clair's. And Clare's. Rosendale is, for people not in the Boston area, is sort of like um, a transitional city between like Dorchester, Roxbury. And Dedham. And, and into the suburbs. Yeah. It's like the middle city. Right. Yeah. So I go to Rosendale and um, I'm going to the St. Clair's open house. And, you know, you're going to different classrooms, seeing two teachers what. Right. And I get to this uh, history history class and this nun is like you're Samaria Johnson aren't you and I was like yes and she was like Miss Stacy has told me all about you and I'm waiting to get you I can't wait to break you and so that's like a prison movie it was crazy and so my mom I told my mom right. and my mom was like I'm not doing this for another four years yeah it's just gonna get worse like this is just ridiculous and she sent me away to Stoughton High School so okay. my mom moved I moved out to Stoughton and stayed with my cousin and my mom was getting ill at the time anyway, so I right. went to Stoughton to stay with my cousin, and I went to Stoughton High. And Stoughton's pretty far. I mean, yeah. that's that's probably 40 minutes from Boston. Yeah. Very, not even just suburban, it's almost kind of rural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it does have a strip club. It does. One, <laughs> one very bad strip club. Is it Alex's? Alex's, and it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's really bad. I remember we, when I was in a punk rock band in high school, we used to always end up weirdly playing shows in Stoughton at, like, VFW halls, and we played a show in this, like, abandoned hotel down there, uh, and you'd always drive by Alex's and uh, a gentleman's club or whatever yeah, it was and they had like a buffet oh, have you been there? yeah no it's disgusting it's I can the, imagine it's the only strip club I've ever been in where I, I looked away like I didn't want to look right. and I was just like I don't want to be here just just like hideous it was people just, yeah just gross do you go to strip clubs often? I do actually really? <laughs> Really? Actually, yeah, I do. But not, mean, in, not here so much. But when I was living in Atlanta, yeah, I did go to strip clubs a lot. Inadvertently? Um, no, I really just love strip clubs. <laughs> just They're great clubs. places to be. And in Atlanta, they're really like a social scene more. Like girls right. go, guys go, there's pool. Oh, wait, you mean Hotlanta? Yeah. There's <laughs> pool, you know, so, so it's, it's just like, hanging out at a bar that happens to be naked people. Right. Yeah. I've only been once, and it was like two years ago, and I was doing the Bridgetown Comedy Festival, and apparently uh, Portland is like the most strip clubs per capita capita out of any wow. place in the world or something so they did like a comedian's strip club crawl and i got talked into going to one of them and i was just very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. <laughs> i, I would imagine not you know not knocking you but you don't strike me as a strip club type of guy no i'm not it's, i would imagine I mean, I don't have a uncomfortable yeah, yeah I'd no, imagine not my thing you not wouldn't my like thing. that uh, yeah, so Alex's is what Stoughton is known for. Did kids in the high school talk about Alex's a lot? Yeah, they did. Like, yeah. some kids, like, try to sneak in and stuff because, you know, people want to see boobs, especially right. young boys. In the pre-widespread internet age. <laughs> exactly. Did you go to college? Yes, I did. Where'd you go? I went to Clark Atlanta University, and then I left there, and I went to a community college in Georgia called Barter College, which was, like, a terrible place. That Why did you head down go. south? Well, my, my brother was down there. Okay. I always wanted to go to Georgia. My mom had passed away when I was 16. Right. 
I was just you ready. kind of want to get out of here. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, I just want to get out of here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I went down south because that's where everybody was going right. when I was graduating from high school. It's like, if you were young and you were black and you had any, like, ambition, you were going to, like, Georgia because Atlanta was, was just... there a lot going on there? Yeah, Atlanta was just, like, where it's at. Especially for uh, young black kids. There's a lot of upward mobility. Like, okay. a lot of my friends, had, you know, opened up their own stores, had okay. fashion lines. Were just There was just a lot of stuff going yeah, on. So that's a world I know nothing about. So it was like... All right, this is where you go. You that know? was like the Williamsburg for black kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. I see. <laughs> exactly. I see. So I went down there and I, I got into Clark and I was there for like, I don't even, I can't even really say I went there because I was there for like maybe three months and I didn't really go to any classes and I couldn't afford to stay in school. Right. Like some freaky stuff happened with my brother and my money and it was just crazy. Right. Mostly probably due to demons or devil possession. Mm, exactly. Right. So I ended up uh, going to a Catholic school, I mean a um, community, community college that was underneath a Lord and Taylor. In a mall? In a mall. In Phipps Plaza. So it was right next to like a Lord's and Ladies hair salon <laughs> and like, like the, the, yeah, the photo like, place? Literally you had to go through, you could go through the Lord and Taylor to get to it. You go down the escalator to the basement of the Lord and Taylor and you could walk oh out this God. door and there was like a school under there. There's a community college underneath a department store. Yes. That sounds like my dream. And I love a department store. Love them. And if I could have gone to college in a department store, yeah. I would have had a lot it more fun. It was terrible. It was a bad idea. Did you finish? No, I just drank a lot and partied too much. Yeah. And like, I don't really think I ever wanted to go to college. I think I just wanted to get like you, you out of get, You wanted an excuse to get out of Boston. Yeah. But also, I think that it feels like you have to go. Like, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. So if you don't, there's It was a, a huge thing of like, you have to go. And like, this is what your mother would have wanted you to do. Right. And all of that stuff. But I don't really ever think it was for me. Yeah. 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 So you moved back here. Yeah, I moved back here. Uh, I want to say four years ago now. Four okay. or five years. Yeah, ago. I think that's where I met you. Yeah, that's four probably years about ago. Four years ago. Mm -hmm. And you just started doing stand up when you moved back here. Yeah. Okay. I had I had been exposed to stand up before. Uh, um, I had a uh, Chris Tab was married. Well, is married to my cousin. Okay. So he kind of Boston comedian. Yeah. So when I first was like, I always kind of wanted to do it, but I don't know. Around twenty, I was like. I really want to do this. Right. So I linked up with him and he kind of brought me around. And I did Dicks when it was, you know, in, by Emerson. Yeah. I did it like twice and I was just terrible at it. Or at least I felt terrible at it. People told me I wasn't, but. Well, that means you're good. If you feel bad at it, I just people was like, who are like, do it one time and they're like, I'm probably the best. That's <laughs> usually the worst. I was just like, I'm so. Because I, I think I had in my mind what. I knew what good stand-up was. Right. And I was just like, I am a million years away this from... You were always kind of a wise-ass right. school and stuff, so it was kind of made sense. So I was just like, oh, this is... I'm bad. And I always just loved comedy. I always was like a studier right, of comedy. Right, right. Um, inadvertently. So I was just like, this sucks, you know? And I think it was just like, I knew I didn't really have a, a voice or an identity right. Right. or anything. Because I'm 20 yeah. and I'm still like even dating guys. Like I have no idea who I am at right, this point. Right, right, right. I'm just figuring stuff out. So in the midst of all that, you know, I moved to go away to school. Right. Because I stayed for a year after I graduated. So I moved to go away to school and then I'm just like, you know, it kind of goes to the back burner yeah, of my yeah, yeah. mind. But you have yeah, a lot more going on. Right. Yeah. But every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I remember that and it was right. cool and I would like to try that again. Right. And um, I went through a lot of different career paths, you can say. Like, I was doing promotion and club stuff and music stuff, but it was always kind of in the entertainment field. Right. But it felt like I was always, like, behind the scenes trying to help someone else achieve right. their mm -hmm. dream what music or stuff goal. Are you doing? Uh, I was doing managing really? uh, of an artist. and This is in Atlanta? Mm hmm. And, um, yeah, we almost got a deal, like most people. But it was cool. Like, I met a lot of people. Like, I met T.I. I met tons of people. I was Jeezy. I was, like, in and out of studios None a of lot. None of these names mean anything Killer Mike. Uh, <laughs> you could be making up names, and I would, I would be like, oh, yes, yeah, so, okay. So, it was neat. It was yeah. really neat experience, and I think it, it definitely helped me in my stand-up career. Like, yeah, oh, I'm sure. It definitely gave me a lot of You can tools, apply some, some Tons of stuff. It. So, uh, when I came back home, I was just like, you know, I'm tired of just not doing what makes me happy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. being afraid i think that's really the biggest thing was just a fear thing of like because uh, i really wanted to do it you know yeah. what i mean i remember uh, i was hanging out with this girl and um uh, she was just like what do you want to be you know and that's a weird question and uh i was like a comedian yeah. you know yeah. and she was like are you serious because like in atlanta no one ever thought like i was really quiet right and you know I'm, i'd say funny things here and there but Mostly, I'm just chill and quiet. Right. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, that's what I want to do. And she was like, why aren't you doing it? And I was like, because I think I'm going to be good at it. Yeah. Which, 
was the first time I was really honest about what was making me afraid. Because it was like once I did it, that I had to do You're it. Kind of stuck doing it. Yeah, yeah, and I've had like I have huge commitment issues in general, just right. from being young and moved around a lot. And yeah, like, yeah. Stuff. So you don't want to go on a path. Right. I'm but like, you, you <laughs> haven't found that path yet in 1994. <laughs> no. But 1994. Were you, were you thinking about wanting to do that stuff? How many? I was. I was thinking about kind of secretly. Secretly, like, how could I have a job just being funny? Like, I always knew, like, I was funny. So not even being cocky, but like, I knew, like, I knew how to make people laugh. Like, yeah. I knew how to tell a story and embellish enough of it. And for people who can't see Sam right now, she is wearing like a Groucho Marx glasses and mustache combo. <laughs> it's really funny. It's <laughs> So I, I did, but I didn't know it was like a real thing. You know, I didn't yeah. know it could be anything. Right, right, you know, right, right. it's like right. my parents were, you know, very regular people. Like, would my, you watch stand up on TV? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you guys had cable. Yes. Okay. Yes. And since your brothers aren't in the house, you kind of had free reign of the television. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I had cable in my room. Oh, okay. I had a TV that's, cable in my that's room. That's everything. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I had pretty free TV time. So on Saturday night, let's jump in. Uh, yeah. What did you watch at 8 o'clock on Saturday, September 24th? Clarissa explains it all. So you were a snick person. I was definitely a snick person. I was big on... Um, I liked Nickelodeon because it was like cool. It was cool programming geared towards kids, but it was smart. Yeah. Yeah. It was smart and it was engaging. It definitely wasn't at that time, especially. This was, was sort of the tail end of it, but Nickelodeon had an adi- like an anti-adult attitude, right? And it was very much like, uh, yeah, it's kids doing stuff. Yeah, and, it's, it's we, not and we can like do that cool that. stuff. Like, yeah, kids yeah. can do cool things. Yeah, their rules are bull. We right, can, and, and it, <laughs> it sounds silly now, exactly. uh, but it was oh, it was, it was awesome. kind of revolutionary at the time. No, and it was great or anything like that. It was like MTV, but for like kids, it was great. Yeah, it was like, and, was, and it had they, they had the news and like oh yeah, Linda Ellerbe and, and like and that stuff was great. And yeah, it didn't talk down to kids. There no, was some it was great. So stuff, Clarissa, so. this episode is best friends Sam and Clarissa play the dating game. This is the one where they try to get together. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Doesn't yeah, yeah. work out. No, because that's not how friends are supposed to be. They should. They should. They shouldn't be hooking yeah. up. Yeah, uh, I, I generally would have watched Clarissa at this time uh, when I was fourteen. So, so Snick started in ninety two when I was twelve, and I usually watched it. But by ninety four, I was kind of aging out of that uh, sort of world. Well, on a Saturday, I'm typically watching Nickelodeon all day. Yeah. So it's just flowing just don't into the it. channel. Yeah, like I'm yeah. watching Guts. I'm watching Legends of Hidden Temple. Right. I'm watching Dogen. So you're so I'm really there. just watching Nickelodeon all yeah, day. Anyway. I think that's fair. Uh, I probably would have watched <laughs> Cops because I've watched Cops every Saturday night to this day. See, it was like a back and forth for me. Like sometimes I would. Like if I was if I came out my room and I was watching TV with my parents, yeah. I'd watch Cops because yeah. they watch Cops. Yeah. But I was like, Man, if I'm in my room just in my me time, I'm going to yeah, watch, watch Clarissa. Uh, or I would have been possibly on WPIX watching They Live, the John Carpenter movie starring Roddy Roddy Piper from <laughs> You've never seen it? No. Oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> TV Guide only gives it two stars, sadly. But this is John Carpenter's dark parable about aliens disguised as yuppies. It stars Keith David, Roddy Piper, has the longest fight scene on film to this day. I might have uh, to check that oh, out. You, you would love I like Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper's great. Keith David's great. Uh, it, it's a really good movie. They Live. It's very anti Reagan. Yeah, All right, I gotta really. check that out. Uh, so eight thirty, would you go with Pete and Pete? Maybe my favorite show Nickelodeon ever did. Great, yeah, great it's... show, great writing. Um, the Mister Frosty episode is my favorite. Yes, what we did on our summer vacation—that was the, the of, sort of pers- uh, for the pilot episode for the series in a lot of ways. It was yeah, the first special. It was so good. That was such a great show. Uh, it doesn't say which episode it is this evening. A family. This is a great one. Okay, a family feud erupts when Mister Hickle, who is played by Steve Buscemi, mm-hmm. if you remember, uh, bounces radio frequencies off the metal plate in Mom Wrigley's head. Uh, this is a really weird one. Uh, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> I mean, Steve Buscemi's on a kid. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I don't think I remember that specific episode, but um, I was huge into Pete and Pete. I just really enjoyed. It. I just enjoyed Nickelodeon. So I here's a question great. for you from a, um, a sort of race perspective. Mm-hmm. There was a, a, a writer of Nickelodeon, a book about Nickelodeon, who got in some trouble recently because he complained about how ethnic Nickelodeon is now and was complaining about it, which mm-hmm. I think is off base. But um, at this time especially, it, it's all white kids on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Did you find that alienating at all? Or, or uh, did it matter? You know what? No. I, like, I don't know. It was... To me, TV was like part fantasy anyway. Yeah, stories. So stories. it was always good to like see 
lives that I wasn't necessarily living, you right, know, like right. exposing me to stuff that wasn't necessarily my day to day. So it's escapism a bit. A bit of escapism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I'd watch like, you know, Save by the Bell and it's like, oh, I'd be cool as hell to be yeah. like Zach Morris or like, yeah. you know, this would be cool. And like, so it, it not really because then it's like when I wanted to do like my black thing, I would just like watch Fox or something. <laughs> Every show on Fox. <laughs> Fox has just said Fox. It's a black thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Um, you know, I always wondered about that because, you know, I take for granted growing up where, you know, the majority of kids on TV and uh, at least when I was growing up and we were growing up were probably more my race. Right. Uh, so I always wondered. And I had, I had like well-rounded experiences too. Like I would watch Lucha Shorts, but I went away to overnight camp. So it was right. like, you know, you can still relate. See, and I'd never been to overnight You can camp. still relate. Yeah, I've levels. never done that. And like, I, yeah. The only show I didn't really get was probably like Hey Dude. I was just like, was I hated Hey white. Dude. I didn't yeah. like Hey Dude very much either I hated much. hey dude yeah I don't think that was a race thing I think that was just no it was just terrible it wasn't a race thing it was a taste thing <laughs> I'm going to get a shirt that says that. Uh, 9 o'clock, you sticking with Nick? No, 9 o'clock, I'm leaving my room to go into the room with my parents, and I'm watching America's Most Wanted. So this was a family thing you guys watched together? Yeah, like, we just watched America's Most Wanted. I mostly would be scared out of my mind, because I, just, right. I, I was one of these, like, sensationalism works... Was well that, on me. Was that the only show you watched with your parents? No, we used to watch like America's Most Wanted. Um, I used to watch like Frasier with my mom sometimes. Oh, that's weird. Uh, she was into like she really liked Kelsey Grammer a lot. Yeah. Like she was a big Cheers fan. Well, I loved him on Cheers, and I hated yeah. Frasier. She was a big Cheers fan, so it was like whatever you yeah. know happened after that, she was with it. Right, right. So I'd watch like that kind of stuff with my mom right. sometimes, and like Jeopardy, of course, like yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that with my mom. And um, Star Trek. She was a huge Trekkie. Original series or Next Generation? Both. Oh, cool. She was into both, and I never understood any of the three shows right. but I would just You'd watch it anyway because I was hanging out with my mom you guys do together yeah. yeah so did you ever see anyone you thought you knew on America's Most Wanted no I okay. ne it never got that serious for okay. me but I just it, like the stories would just like haunt my mind well, yeah it's terrifying because it's, yeah. it's not even like aliens and stuff it's real people committing right. real crimes and then my mom told me like John Walsh's real backstory yeah, about yeah, his yeah. son and yeah. I'm like ah that's just it was too much for yeah that is a little too much yeah I, so, I would not watch it for those very reasons <laughs> if I could avoid it <laughs> like it was scary yeah no it's a scary and show and I would like split between that and uh, are you afraid of the dark like I'd watch half which of is Very less scary. Morning, which also scared the crap out of me though so we, are you just generally easily spooked yes like, I am scared of I, all kinds I, of things I, and, and I have a crazy imagination so you don't watch horror movies or anything like that I don't so this episode of are you afraid of the dark is a young woman strikes up a friendship with a strange new neighbor I don't remember that episode specifically, but I would occasionally watch that. And again, uh, you know, it's 19, uh, 1994. I'm, I'm still kind of aged out of yeah. the Snick thing. But uh, they're re airing a Saturday Night Live marathon on uh, Comedy Central. And at this time in the 94, early 90s, they pretty much aired the episodes from my favorite era of Saturday Night Live, which was like 85 mm -hmm. to 89, 90-ish. And so I definitely probably would have been watching that at mm. the time. Uh, I will mention that Halloween 3 was on, though, at uh, 9 o'clock, and I'm a huge, huge horror movie fan. So I definitely would have watched those. I uh, also want to mention at 10 o'clock, the show Sisters was on, which I watched every damn week. Who was... I was... I Celia saw Ward was the big uh, actress on it. Okay, because I was yeah. like, I don't know... Swoozy yeah, Kurtz was show. on it. It was it was sort of uh, an update of like thirty something. It was like suburban middle class white women that are sisters that have problems and mm. someone has cancer and someone's mm. having an affair. Yeah, so that's an adult and, stuff. You know that kind of stuff. That's yeah. heavy stuff. I probably wasn't yeah. getting into that. I watched that stuff all the time. I used to watch thirty something when I was eight or not. I don't know why I watched <laughs> those things. I have no idea why I watched those things. Sunday night, eight o'clock. Would you go with? The Simpsons. Okay. Were you a diehard Simpsons? Fan? Yes. Yes. I had the uh, Simpsons Sings the Blues Ah, tape. do the Bartman. Uh, my favorite song was Look at All These Idiots with Mr. Burns right, on it. Right. It was great. Um, did you I have just a Simpsons, Simpsons shirt? I did. I had a Bartman shirt. I had a black Bart Simpson. Black Bart. Shirt. The boot I had a black Bart cake for my birthday that year. Where'd you get the black Bart shirt? Um... It was like some local store in my neighborhood yeah, had a bunch of different They were ones. everywhere. Every yeah. convenience store. Yeah, it was, there like was anywhere. Those, yeah. It was yeah. those and the, and the Hip Hop Looney Tunes. Yeah, stuff. I had yeah. that shirt. And yeah. I've been looking for one on eBay in my size because I feel like that needs to be resurrected. They they can go for kind of a lot of money these days. Yeah. yeah. I, we used to go to the flea markets all the time as a kid and 
in that time especially we would go to this one in Revere that was in the parking lot of the Revere cinemas mm -hmm. and I felt like they had a whole aisle of just like black Bart Simpson <laughs> memorabilia and then all hip hop uh, Looney Tunes yeah yeah, yeah 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 like whatever you needed right yeah yeah or the so. corner mall uh, in downtown oh yeah, downtown. Yeah, 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 you get yeah. the the picture there too with the uh, with the brick behind. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Different like airbrushed yeah. uh, motifs. Yeah. I still like the corner mall in downtown. <laughs> like if you in Boston, if you go to Downtown Crossing, it's sort of been revitalized a little bit now. But that place after five o'clock would be a ghost town. Yeah, no people would be down there. Yeah, because it's like a business district. Right, and it, everything closes early downtown. But the corner mall was not really a mall. It was basically like a. Like a food court. Yeah, That's it. and two stores. Yeah, and it was ridiculously 80s. And it's still the same. It's exactly the same. Yep. And it was the only thing open down there past 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I think there used to be like a chess king in there maybe. Yeah. Like a merry-go-round. Yeah, there was. Yeah. There was one around the corner. It was yeah. right around the corner from the corner mall right next to it. There yeah. was a merry-go-round. My and uncle used to work in there. At the merry-go-round? Yeah. Oh, wow. He used to get us like jeans, like silk colored shirts. jeans and yeah. silk shirts. Good cross colors? Yeah. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was great. Yeah, I used to love it because it's all glass bricks and neon. And it's then he like went from Mary Garone to JW to Jeans West. Okay. Would you still get jeans at that point? Yeah. Still get colored jeans. Nice. Red. Turquoise. Nice. What was your favorite color? Jeans? Turquoise. The turquoise. Yeah, I like I like loud stuff. Yeah. What well, we all do. Was, we all do. You know, I was about the color. Doing the Bart man. So yeah, The Simpsons was a great show. I watched this pretty much every week on Sunday nights yeah. as well. Uh, I kind of checked out around the early two thousands, but by ninety four, I was definitely into The Simpsons. And this one is a romantic novel inspires Marge's family discussion of love, but the stories told, seen in flashback, all seem to end in heartbreak. This is the one that tells like how Homer and uh, oh, Marge, Marge got met. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. This is a very Good one. That was a good one. That was yeah, cute. I enjoyed that one very much. Uh, Eight thirty. What are you going with? Real world. The real world ninety four. Real world. Which is the Boston cast. I From believe. the beginning to the end, I was a real world fan until maybe like two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. I checked out of the real world. Absolutely. Because uh, yeah, die hard. Ninety four. I believe, and it doesn't state in here, but I'm pretty sure that's the Boston cast. I, that's because I wanted to Google it. Before, like I meant to Google it before we started. So this, let's see. 90, I wanted to know. I think ninety ninety one was New York. Who was uh, ninety two was uh, L A. New York was great. Okay. Ninety three was San Francisco. You know what? Ninety four was London. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was to say. London. I feel like it yeah, was. Uh, she's googling that, but I, this is my memory. Let's see how correct I was. I think ninety four was London. Ninety five was Boston. Ninety six was San Di not San Diego, Miami. Ninety six was Miami. And then I think ninety seven was Seattle. Seattle. This is yeah. information that would be of use to no one. <laughs> this will never come up. No one will ever ask me to list. Seattle was my favorite. Tons. One of my favorites. With David? Yes. Yeah. With David and um with the guy who smacked the chick. Oh yeah. Um The girl with Lyme disease. Oh, it's in San Francisco. San yeah. Francisco. I was about to say, I don't think it was London because I didn't watch London. San Francisco was not ninety four. That's what the, that's what the people are saying. Where are you saying that? Yeah, I'm looking at it. MTV. No. World, World San Francisco. Ninety three would have been San Francisco. David Puck Rainey. Ninety four. It's in San what Francisco. What year is it saying it was London? Let's look. This is riveting to people. This is crazy. Yeah, this is because I have a lot to say about San Francisco. I didn't like the San Francisco one. I loved it. Was it your favorite one? No, but it was up there. Um, 95. 95 was London. 95. All right, so I'm a year off. Yeah. So we're in San Francisco then in the real world. Yes, yeah, San Francisco, real world. Awesome. Let's talk about it. I Puck was the man. You liked him? I loved Puck. I didn't appreciate them kicking him out the house. See, he was everything I hated in a human being. I loved everything about Puck. He and reminded I me of people I knew and I didn't like I didn't. Maybe I didn't <laughs> see this when I get back into the like fantasy. Maybe because yeah. I didn't know anyone like that. I was just like so like yeah. captivated by how disgusting he was yeah. and how he didn't see like anything wrong with it. Right, right, right. And um, I, I think it made for great fun in the house as far as dynamics go. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason that I sort of had an aversion to the to the San Francisco cast, and, and in hindsight, I would easily watch it if you had a cast of people like that now, because now the show's just like dumb, right. hot people fighting and right. having sex These are like other. dynamic people. But the, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a true mixture of people from all different backgrounds, and it was kind of what the point of that show was. This is around the time, though, with the real world where I hated the black person all oh, the time. Oh, he was a uh, total they, wet blanket, boring. Yeah, it was that guy with the dreadlock yeah, the awful band, but they right? kept getting black people like that. Yeah, and it was just like, can you get like a engaging black person, please? Yeah. Well, like, no, Heather B in season one is great. Heather B is great. Who right? doesn't like Heather B? Heather B was great. I thought they kicked David out too quick for me to even well, give a shit about. Well, he did assault Tammy. Oh my God, no, he didn't, yeah, and that makes me so angry. I know he didn't. <laughs> my favorite Tammy quote: "It wasn't not funny." <laughs> 
The double negative that she didn't even know. I did love Tammy, though. Man, I liked I Tammy, Tammy, but oh my God, I hated Beth. And I just yeah. felt like Beth perpetuated that Beth whole S? situation. Yeah. And or Beth L. Um, There's two Beths. The terrible Beth. Okay, the yeah. fat I think one. that's Beth S. Yeah. Beth L was the lesbian. That yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Hate Beth. Yeah. She perpetuated that whole situation. Oh, yeah. That was she's, Beth. She's yeah, a sister. She's, she's, yeah. yeah. And then that whack cop came like, you got to get out of here. Yeah. And it just pissed me off. Or there was the time, though, that David flipped out on, on John Brennan for not cleaning up his styrofoam. Yeah, I remember that. His styrofoam. <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> I do remember yeah, that. While he was putting his rollerblades on. <laughs> But I like this one. The, the cast on this one. You know what I think I like Puck? Mohammed was the was Yeah, the Mohammed he, was he terrible. Was so boring. Oh he was God. the most boring person. I was so happy when New Orleans came and they got David because I was like, at least David yeah. is interesting, you know? But uh, I think I like this one because Puck... I like Puck because everyone else was so boring now that I'm looking at them. Yeah, you had Everybody Rachel, was boring. You had Rachel, Rachel, the Hispanic Republican. Boring. It was very boring. Mohammed, boring. Judd Winnick was boring, although Judd, I like him yeah. now. He writes comics now. He's much yeah, more yeah. interesting. Yeah, but he was boring then. Yeah. And Puck was boring. I mean, not Puck. Um, Pedro was boring, boring. But his story was interesting. But it really wasn't. It was just like, okay, it's San Francisco I and think, you're gay yeah, but and I you think, have AIDS. And then he had a whack boyfriend. Sean was very yeah. Sean was But very here's terrible. the thing, though. I it, just wasn't. I just like Puck. I at liked the time, Puck. that was interesting. Though. And I didn't like how they kicked him off via voicemail. Well, fair enough. But at the time, there were there was no one with AIDS on television. This is true. I mean, I mean that was it was groundbreaking. Yeah. But he him as a person, I was so bored by him. Yeah. No, I he wasn't <laughs> like, the most dynamic. Person. I was just like, was, oh my yeah, god, he's that. so bored. But I think that the we can't discount. It's hard to put ourselves in that mindset from twenty years yeah. ago. How crazy it was to see a character on television who's a real person and he died, who has AIDS and dies, and you see like that you watch journey. It. You know no, I mean? no, it was powerful. That that was important. It was but I powerful. Think, I think in some ways that and Puck being such an asshole overshadowed everything else, which is kind of right. why it was boring and why the other cast members couldn't really stand out. Yeah, yeah. and we don't know what they didn't show. Right. Of those. People. But I think we needed Puck though. We needed someone to stick his finger in the peanut butter and. Pick right. his scabs but, over the sink. But the problem is, I think they tried to cast a puck every season after that. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Someone who's an asshole. And yeah, yeah, was, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, which kind of, you know, they got this formula after that. That's true. I did love the London cast, London which people cast complained cool. is boring. They, London was boring, though. Which one was? London was my least favorite. Really? Mm hmm. I thought Boston was my least favorite. Boston? The only reason I liked Boston was when the chick got the uh, kids drunk. I found that to be hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she didn't understand. Montana? Yeah, and yeah. she didn't understand why that was problematic. She was working <laughs> at an after-school program For the YMCA. and let some kids drink, drink wine. wine. And they were like, what, 10? Yeah, and yeah. she's like, I don't get what the big deal is. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, that lady was an idiot. What an idiot. Uh, yeah, I always watch the real world, but uh, I MTV aired stuff a million times. Yeah. So at 8.30. I mean, at uh, yeah, eight thirty on a Sunday, I probably would not have watched it. I would have been watching Hardball, mm. which, although I hate baseball, was a new show on Fox that was sort of like a ripoff of Major League. It was you like a Major what? League the series. I couldn't remember what the show was about. Yeah, so I was like, I don't think I watched it because I was like, I, I couldn't remember it. So I was like, I don't think I was watching. Yeah, it. it was it was basically Major League the TV series. It wasn't great, but I definitely would have watched it. Uh, Nine o'clock. What are you going with? Married with Children. Did you watch this every week? Yes, I did. Did you love it? I loved it. Have you rewatched it since? Yes. And you still like it? Mmm. Oh, it's hard. It's cartoonish. Yeah, it's yeah. like I do for what it is, but I don't. It's it's not like a Cosby Show. I don't yeah. like it like that. Like it I watch Cosby Show up. and I laugh and I laugh. Well, and Cosby I laugh. Show is timeless. Yeah. Married with Children is very. Of it's time. like um, mm, there's certain ones that I'm like, oh, yeah. I remember this one. It was great and it was funny. To me. And at this point, the show had been on for seven years. Yeah, and I'm, season I'm seven. trying. And see this one. So at this point, she's married Jefferson. Oh yeah, Jefferson came in in season three. Right. So yeah. So so this episode is is yeah. what most sitcoms, if they go long enough, end up with an episode in this genre, and it's the dream genre. And so this one, Bud's intense studying for a scholarship makes him periodically nod off. So is the passionate encounter with Marcy's niece a dream or real? Yeah. Yeah. There's not very thought provoking stuff. No, it definitely is. <laughs> I don't know. I was 12. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I would have watched the <laughs> network television premiere of Total Recall. Yeah. Yeah. That, Even though that's I was for television, I would have loved it. Saw it in the theater. Loved it. <laughs> loved it. Uh, 9.30, what'd you go with? Um, just watching MTV till, till, just I, videos? till I fall asleep. Videos and then Beavs and Buttheads coming on yeah. and like Liquid TV, which oh, I was Liquid a big, television Yeah, was I was a big amazing. fan. The Slate, which I love. The State? I mean, The State, yeah, which I love. I'd watch The Slate. <laughs> the State, which was great. 
Sunday um, nights at MTV, I used to watch at midnight, 120 minutes. And that was where I heard all the music I loved. Yeah, I would yeah, take yeah. it, watch it after school with a notebook, write down everything. <laughs> yeah, especially in 94. Especially in 94. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. MTV, yeah. All right, so Monday night, 8 o'clock, saddest night of the week. It's the best night of the week It's the me. best night of the week best for you? Best night of the week for me. What'd you go with? Melrose Place. So you were super into Melrose Place? I was addicted. Did you watch 90210 and all that yes, stuff as well? Models yes. Inc. I started to, but I didn't really love <clears throat> Models Inc. The Heights. I didn't really like any of that stuff. I was just Melrose. Just Melrose. Just Melrose. What was it about Melrose Place that you liked? Um, it was it was just so much going on. Yeah. It was like, how could you not? There was like six different stories going on right. at once. Allison was molested. Yeah. The Sydney was stripping. Chick blew up Melrose Place. She was it the ball crazy. was in a wig? Yeah. And, yeah. See, I, she was a nut bag. Like, it I was always just liked Heather great. Locklear, but I never watched First season? Melrose Place. Uh, once they got rid of the black girl that they had there for no apparent reason. Well, you need a black girl. It was good. Yeah. Once they just got rid of her, like, okay, right. this was stupid. Yeah. Because she you, she never did anything. Right. She lived in the building, and that's really it. Like, right. she was not a part of any real thing. I, and also, Andrew Shue, I found boring. I liked Andrew Shue. Because they, they had that love thing going on. I liked when I would see him in interviews and stuff, but he just, when he would act it. It didn't translate. See, yeah. I could, yeah. I could see that. So this particular episode, Allison doesn't like what she sees when she returns to work. Sydney rejects an offer for partial freedom. So she's in jail or something, I'm assuming? Sydney was just a mess. <laughs> Okay. And this uh, was when it really was getting good, because Sydney was trying to have sex with Doctor... What, what was the guy's name? The Doctor. Oh, I don't know. I never watched Melrose mm, Place. Yeah. Sydney was sleeping with the Doctor, and the Doctor was messing with Kimberly, and it was just crazy. Then we have Reed's parents visit Joe. Jane gives Michael a new view oh, yeah, on Joe. their past. Matt gives his opinion yeah, Michael on Mancini. Michael's hit and run to Kimberly, mm -hmm. uh, who answers with a threat. Woodward, with a threat. Yeah. Woodward Wayne. Yeah, oh, Kathy Ireland was on the show at this time. Michael Mancini, yep, that was the doctor. And he was like a scumbag. Okay. And Most doctors are. Yeah, and Sydney was like, she was stripping, she was drugging. And Kimberly was like, tired of Michael being a scumbag because he was sleeping around with Sydney behind her back. When you and to, he killed somebody. When you go to strip clubs now, do you look at the women and go, maybe that's a Sydney? Maybe she's no, got but a I should. Going on. I should be doing she's that. Got a Sydney situation. <laughs> I should be doing writing that. Writing fan fiction about them. And I'd probably go less if I thought. Yeah, yeah you'd, you'd be paying a bunch of Sydneys. Uh, so I would not have watched this. I, I never watched the nighttime soaps. I really couldn't get into the show. Uh, I would have been torn between two movies. So on TV 38, the local UHF station here in the Boston area, they were showing Overboard, the mm. 1987 Goldie mm -hmm. Hawn movie, which I, mm. is one That's of my great. favorites. My wife, Rachel, watches that maybe twice a week still every <laughs> week. Or there was a made-for-TV movie starring Kelly Martin, who was done with Life Goes On but hadn't got her talk show yet, and it's called A Friend to Die For. Mm. They give it three stars, and it's on NBC, and it's a high school student's murder rocks an upper middle class town in this fact-based 1994 TV movie. The victim, a popular yet snobbish teen named Stacey Lockwood, played by Tori Spelling mm. of 90210. This is all good stuff. Yep. Her uneasy relationship with a sensitive and studious classmate, who's Kelly Martin, is the key to the crime, which the teleplay links rather tenuously to intense social pressures at school and mm. within the community. Valerie Harper is in it, who I'm a huge huge fan of this met is all once cried stuff. in front of her it was very embarrassing Terry O'Quinn is in it who later went on to be in uh, Lost but he had just done The Stepfather 2 uh, this sounds fantastic yeah no this sounds good yeah I would have watched that uh, 9 o'clock what'd you go with 9 o'clock I'm watching wrestling so you passed up Mercy Murphy Brown because at this point, Murphy Brown's in syndication, I believe. So you would have watched it then. Yeah, I would watch that another time. This is a very special Murphy Brown, Sam. I would watch that another time. A monkey guest stars in this episode of Murphy Brown. <laughs> This is Murphy must kiss up to station executives at an affiliates meeting after she badmouths her network's fall lineup. And if you look at the ad here, I will show it to you. It says, Murphy meets her match. Murphy takes on the network's new fall lineup and winds up with a monkey. Whoa. I don't know how that happens, but she somehow is in the custody. I kind of feel like I remember that episode, custody. too. So you're watching wrestling. Did you love wrestling? I loved wrestling. WWF, WCW? Both. All of it. Watched both. I watched both. Who's your favorite wrestler? Of all time is the Ultimate Warrior. Okay. Favorite wrestler of Rest all time. Rest in peace. Um, yeah. I saw great. him wrestle live. I did too. I saw him wrestle at the Garden. Uh, it was amazing. I um, saw him wrestle Andre the Giant at the Boston Garden. No, that's dope. I yeah. saw him wrestle uh, Macho Man, but okay. it would have been nice to see him yeah. wrestle Andre the Giant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just a big wrestling fan ever since I was a kid. I watched wrestling. You still watch it? Um, not as much. I do here and there. Not as much. I like Lucha Libre. 
Yeah, Lucha that's Libre fun. Is fun. Yeah, and I've I've been watching um Tokyo. Yes. That's the extreme that's leagues, yeah. like Cactus Jack and the yeah. landmine matches yeah. and the barbed wire matches. Yeah, yeah, that's been fun, but those people are this nuts. has got a little too soap opery after a while yeah. for me, like WWE and stuff. Oh yeah. By ninety four I had checked out. This time is this time it's pretty good still. So you're watching USA Network WWF wrestling. Yeah. It doesn't tell us what the matches are. I'm still watching that made for TV movie. I wanna mention too. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, at 10 o'clock, I'm watching Northern Exposure, which I loved. I didn't get it. Loved it. Loved it. I didn't That's get it. That's my nighttime soap. I always want to go to Alaska just because of Northern yeah, Exposure. Yeah, like, now that I'm a, an adult, I'm like, oh, this was great. It's you a know? fun show. Have you rewatched Northern yeah. Exposure? It's good. It's good. It's a good show. But uh, when I was younger, I was like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Tuesday night. 8 o'clock. Full House. Are you sticking with ABC all night? No. Okay. No, So not. Full House tonight is uh, Comets Come Home, The Gang's on the Run because the dog's on the loose. They chose this as their season premiere for that week. The dog gets loose. Comet is kind of the exam When Comet the dog came into the Full House universe, that's kind of when I stopped watching. Yeah. Not because I didn't like Comet, but that's I was just that <laughs> that's, sort of represents when I was too Right. Old. That's when you were just like, yeah, I yeah. can't get with this anymore. Yeah. I would have watched Wings, which I loved. They moved it from Thursday nights to Tuesdays in 1994. Amy Yazbek joined the cast, who I love from Problem Child. My mom watched Wings. Wings is great. If Well, it makes sense. She's a fan of Cheers. Yeah. There was a lot of Cheers alum that, that oh, made really? Wings. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, David she, Angel and a bunch of people from Wings. Yeah, she from, watched uh, Wings. Cheers. Yeah, Wings, very funny show. Full House, the eighth season opener, when Jesse's kicked out of the band because he's distracted oh. by all the things going on in his life, he soon becomes focused on revenge. They kicked him out of the Rippers? Yeah, it's no longer Jesse and the Rippers, it's just the Rippers. Yeah, it's sad day. It is a sad day. 8.30, what are you going with? Comic View on BT. So you're watching stand-up? Yes. And did you watch, was Comic View your go-to stand-up show? Yeah, at the time, it was the only thing I had a real, like, access to given like the time of day and stuff you yeah. know like it came on at 8 30 any other type of stand-up was like late late you know what i mean right um it was consistent because i couldn't watch def jam you know def jam was like have you tried to watch that though too late when i was a kid you know so like, you had hbo yeah i had hbo but def jam i feel like came on Did saturday you hbo in your room yeah wow i feel like uh i had all the channels wow yeah legally yeah because i had a black box <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legally. Yeah. My mom was very paranoid about stuff like that. She's like, no, they're going to find us. Okay. So she wouldn't do she things like that. She didn't you were watching like, potentially inappropriate things. I don't... She... Like, did she you was, watch like, Skinamax and that kind of stuff? Sometimes. But she, like... She wasn't really strict with me about TV. She was strict right. with me about how I behave. It was like, you better be able to know the difference between reality and... So she and, didn't like, see a connection between the two. No. She's just like, you know, like, know that this is a separate thing from, right. like, life. Right. <laughs> like, and that's right. it. So I didn't watch Comic View that often. I, it was... I didn't watch Def Jam either. I, I just couldn't... It was very... Okay, so the thing is, Def Jam, Comic View, all these, like, urban comedy shows... They were very This is like geared, a formula. Yeah, gear it yeah. was like geared to one like keel and like yeah. very formulaic and like you know you have to get up, you gotta talk about getting a beat in. Yeah. You gotta talk now when I was young, when I was twelve and my mind wasn't like mature enough to like really wrap myself around deep concepts and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlin type material, it was just funny to me. You there know, like a lot ah, of people that stood out to me as being like an interesting individual. There wasn't any. It was just very much there like was a few. You would get some every now and then. I think like, it was most of the host though. Yeah, but I remember the first time I saw Bernie Mac on Yeah, Bernie Def Mac Channel. or Chris Tucker. Yeah. Chris Tucker stood out. But like Bernie Mac was still talking about the same topics that would you know getting beaten and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, I remember when I saw him on Def Comedy Channel, I was like, this guy is yeah. different. Like yeah. something he's yeah. got something else going on. Yeah. Man. I mean I, I feel like that that's just a time when like they were just, you know Like David from the real world? <laughs> terrible comedian. Right. Was, he was like the, world, like the most generic. He was like Leaping Lenny from yeah. WWF. But just, I wanted him to make it. But he just wasn't I, good. He wasn't. And they would like follow him around. Yeah, I, just, I, wanted him, I wanted him to make it. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I wanted David to make it. I would not have watched. He was in House yet. Party 3? He was. So was uh, Boston comedian Chance Langton. Was he? Oh, yeah. What was he doing in House Party 3? He's one of the professors, I believe. He's in House Party 3. Oh, two. Is he two? Two. Yeah. Uh, dark skin party. guy with, with the boxer cut? No, Chance Langdon, white guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I met him. Yeah, I think he's in House Party 3. Yeah, I met him. Yeah. I met him. Yeah, we can confirm which House Party he's in, but I know he's in a House Party. Cool. Um, so we're at uh, 8.30. I'm watching the Martin Short Show. 
mm. which was Martin Short's very short-lived sitcom. Mm. Uh, and this was on NBC. And this is a luckless Marty drops big bucks in a high-stakes poker game with some Hollywood hotshots, including Bruno Kirby playing himself. I love Martin Short. He's from SCTV, one of my favorite sketch shows of all time. Just a weird, funny guy. I like Martin Short. Credit. Fantastic. Uh, nine o'clock, would you go with? Home Improvement. Oh, Sam. Why are you disappointed in me? Home Improvement. It was funny. It's not. It's not. Have you rewatched it? <laughs> First of all, I like JTT. <laughs> I like Every, trying to tell I've Thomas. I've never met a girl that, that in our age range that doesn't like right. JTT, and I'm shocked by that. <laughs> What did you like about him? First of all, I have a long history of crushes on baby face white boys. I was, okay. I was very into Fred Savage. Okay. I just, I'm, I like those types. And I like baby face. I like the those actual types. baby face. <laughs> I like yeah. those types. So, uh, JTT was just, you know, he was cute. I was he? I thought he was a weird looking kid. He was very cute. I don't know. He was, I like, it's not my I type. noticed I like, I like my white men classic. Like, blonde classic, and blue. Though? Like, he was blonde and blue. That's why I like him. What's, did he have blue eyes? I always feel like he had just black soul. No, no, no. He had blue or green. Are you thinking of the blonde older kid? That's not JTT. No. The goofy dumb one? No, no, no. I'm thinking of JTT, the young okay. smart one right. who I was into. All right. He had the, like, kind of a Did you bob. go see his movies? No. Okay, so you weren't that into No, no, I wasn't crazy. So in this particular episode, a Tool Time special puts Tim in the cab of a hydraulic crane. What's going to happen? He drops a three-ton beam on Jill's car. Oh, no. Well, that's one way to eliminate that scratch Tim was going to have to repair. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How, don't, how do you not want to watch that? That's, oh, it was the worst. It wacky. was great. And then you had, uh, who was his partner who was smarter than him? Al. Al, right? Yeah. Great. It Al was good. Borland. I liked, By Richard I liked Home Improvement. Richard Karn. Yeah, yeah. Richard Karn. I liked Home Improvement. I can't, I can't, can't do it. I would have been watching Kids in the Hall. See? Adult me says Kids in the Hall. Yeah. But I had to be true to what I really would have been watching. Fair enough. You know, because I saw Kids in the Hall and I was like, mm, I liked it. But I didn't really start watching Kids in the Hall until I was older. Yeah. You know? I loved so, it. I was watching it forever. At 12, I was, and I would watch it like late. For some reason, I remember yeah. like. In HBO the, was on late. Yeah, yeah. That's why I feel like I used yeah. to watch it in the summer, really late at night. Yeah. This is a um, Comedy Central rerun. It, 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 here in America, it aired on HBO first. There, right. Yeah. And that's when I used to watch it. So I, yeah. and I just have to be true. 12 year old Sam is watching Home Improvement. Fair enough. Fair enough. You're standing by it. Uh, I, at 9 30, what'd you go with? I just watched Grace Under Fire because it was just on. It I wasn't a bad It show. wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. And it was very much in the Roseanne vein, which yeah. makes sense. There was a lot of behind-the-scenes people. Right. Brett Butler's sort of onstage persona was sort of Roseanne-ish. Uh, it had Dave Thomas, also of SCTV. In this episode, Grace Ty uh, tries to defuse the situation when a new woman on the crew files a sexual discrimination grievance against Bill. Sounds a little boring. Yeah. But I would have watched it just because... I would have normally watched it if there was nothing else against it that I really liked. But John Larroquette was on, which was an amazing, amazing sitcom. This was season one of John Larroquette. I loved him from Night Court. Yeah. But I wasn't watching his show. Like, I feel like that show was just too adult for me. It was me. very grim. It was yeah, very dark. Yeah, like I wasn't watching the show. It's about an alcoholic who ruined his life and is the manager at a bus station. Yeah, I, I wasn't mean, watching the show. It's a sad show. But I did like him from Michael. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's like, I love him in anything he's ever done. Uh, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. What'd you go with? Wednesday night. Um, Beverly Hills, now to of course. So you're, you're with the Aaron Spelling shows all night. It's, it's Beverly Hills time. It's that time. <laughs> like there's nothing else I would rather be watching at eight o'clock. So did you watch all like every season of it? You watched pretty every much. I didn't really abandon Beverly Hills not to know until way late. I pretty much saw it all because that's a show that ended. I took a year off in protest. Okay, I did do that. What was the thing that sparked your protest? Um, Tori Spelling was supposed to give it up to Brian Austin Green. She didn't, and she did not. And I was livid. And at that point, I just didn't like what he was doing. Because I felt like Aaron Spelling, you know, everybody's screwing He's on the show. Tease. And everybody's screwing on the show. And yeah. you just don't want your daughter to get Before screwed. Though, I don't really want to picture or think of Tori Spelling having sex ever. I didn't want to. But I just felt like, how come everybody else could be a whore? Bait and switch. You felt like you got, you yeah. got lied to. And it's like everybody else could do it. Like, Fair enough. Everybody's doing it. For some reason, because she's your daughter, she yeah. can't be doing it. To be, if you and were I'm a daughter and you were producing a show, would you want to shoot an episode where she has sex? No. Yeah. But the young me didn't care. I was just, I had enough. Sam J. I had Etu. enough. Uh, this, particular, this particular episode, what brought you back? I couldn't 
really stay away. It's, you were it's not what's going on. You were having like the DTs from it. <laughs> so this episode, cool. David finds a woman too close to home for Donna's liking until she finds a new man herself. Brandon has trouble handling his Oh, so this was she met the dude from the pumpkin patch, I yep, think. Yep, and is uh, chal- and a challenge to his political position agrees to ground rules with Dylan. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about this. Nothing. Yeah, well... I know all about it. I would have watched the show. <laughs> I know all about Fair it. Fair enough. I would have watched a show that I never watched at the time, but uh, I recently did an episode with a cast member from this show, and it sounded great, and I wish that I had watched it then. It was called Thunder Alley. No. No? I don't know about no? that. No? Thunder Alley's Ed Asner and Haley Joel Osment. And Jim Jackson? Beaver. Yeah, that former guest of the podcast, Jim Beaver. Uh, it's a sitcom. The odds are good that there will be trouble in the Turner household when Gil takes the kids out of school to go to the racetrack. Mm. I like that. That's legitimately something that happened to me as a kid. Really? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. My grandparents took me to would, would take me out of school and we'd go to the racetrack and bet on horses. Yeah. My you know what my aunt used to do? She'd call, I'd get called down to the principal's office like with a family emergency. Right. So I'd be like, Oh, who died? And my aunt would be like, We have to go, we have to go to the hospital. So I'm like, What the hell? Like who's sick? We get in the car and she's like, We're going to the movies. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to go. And she's like, hey, I wanted someone to go to the movies with. <laughs> And we'd go to the movies. That's pretty awesome. I, but sort of, but not when you think someone's dead. <laughs> well, so, Beverly Hills, yeah. I did want to make a point about now to an O. Okay. This, this is such a big part of who I am as a person in my life. Which, um, not to be, not to offend you, is surprising. I wouldn't say that. Oh, no, yeah. Knowing no. you, I wouldn't be mm-hmm. like, I bet 90210 is a big part of Sam's big life. Part of, big part of my life. And I, I appreciated Aaron Spelling's rebound because I was so upset that he didn't let her do it. But then, right. like, he let mad crazy stuff happen to let her. Let her do too much stuff. Yeah, they got crazy. Like, then Pumpkin, that's what I called him, Ray. Yeah. Because she met him at a pumpkin patch. Okay. He was beating her up and stuff yeah. and, like, throwing her down the stairs. It got real crazy. It's weird that you'd and, be like, I won't let my daughter have sex on film. Right, but, but you let her get, get the shit kicked <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's what like, a little weird. It got crazy. And I think it was like, there had to be some form of outcry of people, like, why isn't her character? Because her character really never did much of anything. She's very good at getting Right. Like, Everyone was on coke, and it was yeah. just crazy. It was insane. I guess and, again, this show. I think it. I, I, I know at the time I felt like it sort of um, lionized behavior that I hated in kids my age. Mm. See, I didn't know anybody doing this kind of stuff. There was cokeheads at my school. See, no, I had no idea. Like that, rapey douchebag. None of and, that was happening. So I was just like, oh my yeah. god, this is so entertaining. Oh, to wow. Me. Yeah. yeah. And then the moment the kid shot himself, David's oh, yeah. friend, because he was <gasps> flipping the gun yeah. around. Yeah. Oh my god. Check this out, man. Yeah. I remember the. What? I remember the Riveting ads for stuff. They were Riveting like stuff. Verse. But I remember, I remember getting an argument at school because there were people on the Friday after that because this one was on Thursday nights, I think, that were legitimately upset. Like they were crying because some <laughs> kind of, some dick. <laughs> And, and I had seen he was doing like a like yeah, a like a was, lone ranger yeah, gun spinning yeah. and he shot himself. And I remember it was sad. I was upset was about it because and that character also was like just introduced. In no, he was only there for a day. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But so, I was very I was very torn up about it. I remember it. these girls at school were really upset. No, I was too. I went on a rant. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like flipping the gun around and like acting it out. It was, it, it was they upsetting. They started crying. They told on the principal to me. <laughs> and I was like, are you making fun of someone they know that died? And I go, no. <laughs> I'm making fun of a show they watched last night. And then the person was like, stop doing it. Get out of here. Yeah. That one specifically, I remember. 8.30, I would have gone with All American Girl, which was Margaret Cho's short-lived sitcom. Mm. I really enjoyed her stand-up at the time, and I, yeah. I would have watched it. Not a great show. Uh, also miserable for her, as she has documented many times. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel like now. I've seen it once or twice, but it wasn't... Mm. I liked her I liked her stand-up. It's very different from her stand-up. Yeah, her stand-up was great. She <clears> had that joke, and you should kill me about her her grandmother finding her dildo and thinking yes. it was a curling iron. Yes, that yes. Was great. It's happened to all of us. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, 9 o'clock, what are you going with? Roseanne. Love Roseanne. Mm-hmm. Just a perfect, perfect sitcom. One yeah. of my all-time favorites. Uh, Dan isn't the only one who's a wreck about Roseanne's pregnancy. It did start to go a little downhill here when Roseanne got pregnant. She was at the height of her like public crazy right, whatever. Right. But it was still an enjoyable show. It was still good. I would have watched it. I really stay. didn't like the idea of her and Dan doing it, but whatever. No, but if it was Tori Spelling and Dan, you would have been okay. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Definitely. Uh, but I like the idea that there was a television show with people who looked like what most Americans look like. Yeah. And they were doing it. No, and I like that. And I, yeah, I like the idea. And I liked how real it was. Like, what everybody liked about Roseanne. Like, I like yeah. the fact that it was like, we can't afford this baby. We're going to lose no, the house. Yeah, not for the baby. Yeah, yeah, not like, oh, yay, baby coming. But yeah. the reality, like, some people don't want a baby. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it could be like a problem. Absolutely. You know, so I thought that was really great. Don't let your baby play with a gun. 
Uh, so, yes. and I would have passed up Models Inc. in favor of Roseanne, and I did love Models Inc. and watch it every week. Uh, nine. Wait, th- wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. You're models. not just gonna. You're not just gonna jump, just over, jump that. over that. Yeah. No, you can't because you've criticized my Beverly Hills choice, right? My Merrill's Place choice, right? But you watched Models Inc. Let me tell you something <laughs> about Ken Reed and Models. I, ever since I was little, loved the world. Of modeling in high fashion, <laughs> but not like a oh yeah, like lecherous way. I just thought it was fascinating. Mm. And I knew who the designers were and all the supermodels. And I used to watch House of Style every week, mm. which was my favorite show on MTV. Uh, it was amazing. You are interesting. It's man, a little Ken. strange, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, Models Inc., I was very excited about. I do remember one episode of Models Inc. when they changed the shampoo and turned the girl's hair green. Yes. That was yes. a good one. <clears throat> that was a pretty good one. In a classic uh, sitcom plot. Going back to the Brady Bunch when uh, Greg's yep. hair turns green. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a movie called The Boy with the Green Hair, which uh, is from the 60s, which is a very weird sort of anti-war movie that stars Dean Stockwell from Quentin, from Quantum Leap yeah. as a kid. Uh, very weird movie. Yeah. Great movie. Strange movie. Yeah. So Models, Inc. This is kind of a fun show. <laughs> Models. I used to watch VIP. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Yeah, it is. Well, a little interesting. Weird. A little weird. Uh, 930, what are you going with? I had a question on Heather Locklear, by the way. Who did? I, I realize that now. As did you ever see the return? That was Smalton? another like girl crush that I had. I feel like every human being on earth, regardless. Heather of, Locklear was freaking yeah. hot. It's Heather Locklear. She was hot. Who doesn't like Heather Locklear? She was hot. Which was the only reason I watched Models Inc. at all because I was like, forget it. She's on it. Yeah, watching. fair enough. Um, do you, have you ever seen Return of Swamp Thing? No. Good Heather Locklear content. In that okay. Movie. Yeah, I, you should watch that. I got it's a fun, fun movie. Fun movie. She's funny in it as well. Uh, Nine thirty. MTV. You just going back to MTV? Yeah. Videos? Yeah, just videos and just, crap. Yeah, fair enough. I think it's a show actually called Videos and Crap. <laughs> now, I think I probably would have gone Beavis with Alan. Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead. I, I loved could, it. Here's, I couldn't get into it. I loved I'll it. I'll tell you why. It's so good. It's so good. Beavis and Butthead was the only time they would show a lot of videos I liked. And I would be really annoyed that they'd be talking, talking over the yes, video. Exactly. You're such exactly. an old man. I know. I always have been now. I always have been. So I'm consistent. I'm at least consistent. Thursday night, 8 o'clock. What Martin. You know? Martin. You loved Martin? Loved Martin. I couldn't get into Martin. Let's talk about how great Martin was. You know what? This is the thing. Some people criticize Martin because they're like it was a lot of like stick and over the top acting, it's silly and silly I hated stuff, Shanae-nae. and the characters and all that stuff. But for me, um, I thought he did that stuff so well. Like it was in the tradition of like older sitcoms, you know, like what, and, like the way it was played up. But I'm trying to think of like some that I can think of. So like you could head. even get into it with like Shanae and all that stuff. Hilarious. Oh, I just couldn't. Hilarious. It was Hilarious. so cartoony. Mar- Martin is still a, a talk like a show I can watch now. Did you rewatch it? Yes, and die laughing. Did you like his stand up? First one, yes. Okay. Second one, no. Yeah, but, because the show is very different from his stand up. Yeah, but I thought he was. I thought he did the characters well. I, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you on that. I just didn't um, like the characters. <laughs> Like the little kid, the the kung fu dude. Yeah, it's just it was hilarious. It was just the security too broad. guard, it was too Otis. Broad for me. And then the other, like Tracy Morgan as Hustle Man. Yeah. Um, this episode, man from the fifth floor. Uh, Disenchanted with the single scene at Nipsey's. Mm-hmm. Martin enlists the aid of Otis and Pam to help win Gina back. Yeah. And they had like a good. You know what also was too like. They were a young, like, they were a young love, but it was, like, quality. Like, you really felt like Martin and Gina loved each other. It, but, see, you know, I really liked Gina. Yeah. I, when I would watch it, I'd be like, she can be better than this. <laughs> I really thought that. I really thought that. Who thought that? I thought that. You didn't think she could do better than Martin? Is kind I've of, never heard anyone say that. He was, like, kind of a loser, and she was, like, kind of successful, and, you know, she was... She could have done so much better than Yo, she was keeping him afloat. Kim Reed is officially a hater, bro. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you don't think Gina could if you don't think Gina could have done better than Mark. That was real wrong. love. That was real love. And it was like young he treated it her was bad. like young hip hop era love. And that's what I liked about it. Like poetic justice? Yeah. See, I saw that because I love Janet Jackson. <laughs> Janet Jackson's like my favorite. Yeah. And we discussed so. this before. I think she's the better Jackson. She is. She's the best one. I saw Poetic Justice and I was like, uh, Tupac, you are not nearly good enough for Janet <laughs> so Jackson. So you're a hater. You are it's not official. Nearly... Is that what a hater is? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that is. Is that someone who just hates dudes <laughs> yeah. who are dating women? Yes. That... That's a hater? <laughs> yes. You don't think Janet Jackson could have done better than a Tupac? Is a... <laughs> a hater is a dude who's like... You can do better than that guy. Like, but I'm right. I don't think that about everyone. 
Just Janet Jackson and, and Gina. That was Gina. That was quality. Martin was good for her. You think that he could have done better than her? Ooh, probably not. No. <laughs> He was lucky to have her. But it was like, especially if you were a house party fan, it was good to see them together, acting together in a role. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it was like... Did you go see all the house party movies in the theater? I I didn't see any of them in the theater. I saw all of them at home. I saw all of them in the theater. (laughs) And and I saw Baby's Kids in the theater. I saw Baby's Kids in the theater, and that was good. Robin Harris. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I I wouldn't have gone with Martin. Normally, I would have gone with Mad About You. Mm. which was uh, probably as far from Martin as you can get yeah. in the show. But a really smart, funny show, and maybe I think the most underrated sitcom of the 90s. I watched it old, like it's a, funny. A, older, and yeah. I enjoyed it. It's funny, but mm-hmm. this was the one year that Thursday nights were my, my so-called life night. Mm. And I've discussed this before, but my so-called life was a show that I watched from day one mm-hmm. because I loved 30-something. It was about characters that were my age at that time. So it's about a 14-year-old girl. I was a 14-year-old, not a girl, mm-hmm. but close. Uh, and similar haircut. <laughs> and uh, I love the show. It, it just captured what it felt like for me exactly at that time. It's and a when, good I, show. when I watch it now, it's like looking through a high school yearbook or something. Like yeah. I have those sorts of. Um, it was sort of my my what I wanted my high school to be like by proxy. Right. And and there was a girl that I had a crush on at my high school. Mm. The only one I high school I had a crush on in high school. And every Friday. I felt I, that way about Dawson. Creek for some reason. Real one's sort of similar. Sort of yeah, similar. Uh, Kevin, um, Kevin, what's his name that created Dawson's Creek and wrote the Scream movies? Kevin Williamson? Uh, he based Dawson's Creek on a show called James at 15, which mm. is a 70s show set in Boston. And I love James at 15, so I watched Dawson's Creek and I was just kind of disappointed with it. Because it's about sort of rich kids in the South. So but my soul called life. Yeah, no, felt that was real. a good show. Yeah, and I got to talk to this girl every Friday. And they had the it. gay character. Yeah, Ricky. Well, Which they never really talked about him being gay. It, it wasn't a huge deal. It was obvious to yeah, everybody. Yeah, there was like it was that was a good like this is when like the gay stuff was like happening kind of <laughs> you know. I pull like, a quote for the end of the episode. And I think that'll be because <laughs> it, like, it was like okay. Like, it was it when was, mainstream started accepting right, gay people. Right, like it, and it was like we this is something we need to talk about or yeah. something. But it was always like a huge deal. Like a gay well, episode would be like two episodes. It yeah, maybe like a two be continued. Some shows like when the chick kissed but gay episodes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like the chick who kissed Roseanne, yes, you yeah. know, and it was like oh my god. Yeah, I think the difference was in, at this time in the nineties was it was sort of a progressive time. You know, you had Clinton in the White House and all this stuff. But you did have gay characters on television prior to this, but they were always a figure of fun. They were the butt of jokes. No pun intended. Right. Or they uh, were, like, gay, but they wouldn't say outright yeah, they were gay. Like, but, Anthony from Designing Women. Yeah. You'd be laughing at their femininity, basically. Right. Like, Anthony was definitely gay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they were just like, he's been to prison and he's Southern. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Uncle Arthur from Bewitt. I mean, there's a ton of these characters. Yeah. But it was really around this time you started getting gay characters in dramas mm-hmm. and, you know, presented just as a real person. Yeah. They're not a, they're not a, a punchline. And right. that was interesting. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, and and I agree that that character was, like a lot of kids at high school, there was definitely the gay kid. Yeah. Who now probably is out of the closet and doesn't, my boy doesn't care. Doesn't care at uh, all. But, every, you know, there was a kid in every grade yeah. that probably... Every I felt like it was... I grew up in a great time in that sense that, like, by the time I was, like, in high school, there were gay-straight alliances happening right. in schools right. and, like... So you had a support. Right. And I was in the GSA. I was on the straight side because that's what I thought I was at the time. But Did you really think that? Yeah. I, I had a boyfriend. I had a boyfriend yeah. from the time I was 15 until I was, like, 22. So what... Maybe some more of that. What changed... Like, when did you decide it was... You know what? I think it was more of a... When you when you meet someone that young, you know, yeah. you're still developing and figuring oh, stuff yeah. out. And so it was like he was the only person I was with, you know right. what I mean? And then we lost our virginity to each other at like right. 18. So it was the person, not the gender. And it was exactly. Yeah. It was him. I just really, really loved him. And then yeah. once we worked together and I'm like out exploring like yeah. the world, I'm like, I don't think I'm really that into yeah. guys. Like, yeah. I'm just not really that attracted to guys. I don't really find that connection with guys. Well, they're gross. And then I had, they put, they put me in shock. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, maybe I like girls. It was really one of these like, yeah, but it wasn't like, of, oh my God, maybe it was kind of like, you know, no. maybe, yeah. I think because I, at that point I was such a solo person, you know, my, like my mom had died, like I said, so I was really out in this world on my own. Right. So the only opinion at that point that mattered to me was mine. Do you think if your mom had been still alive, you would have been less likely yes. to? Because she, you don't think she would have been? No. Really? No. She would have eventually, like if my mom was alive, I'd still have long hair. I right. would never cut my hair. Like I'd, I'd be gay, but yeah. there would just be things I would not do. You'd because, be girly gay? Yeah, because she would be completely just offended. 
but <laughs> like, right. by any of that. Right. Like, dude, that is not my daughter who I had. Right. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah. So no, definitely not. Yeah. I'm just like a sporty girl. Like I wear right, a lot right, of like right. you know basketball shorts. Yeah, Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Looney Tunes. I'm so sure. In a ponytail. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of sneakers did you have? Patrick Ewing's. Oh, Patrick Ewing's. Yeah, yeah you were gay. <laughs> I, used wear them, I used to wear them with my uniform, my Catholic school skirt. And uniform. they were cool with that? Yeah, they they you could wear any shoe you wanted. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I don't I didn't know anything about uniforms and interesting. The shoe was not part of the uniform. No. Did kids really push the rules on that? Yeah, and you could wear any like shirt. Like I used to get the polo shirts, right. but then they said that like the poor kids who couldn't get polo shirts were feeling some kind of way, and so they like you they had would, t-shirts. The no, we had like a button ups. But, oh, good. Like you yeah, had different colors, like yellow, yeah. blue, but I would get polo ones. Right. And then they were like, I'm, you know, all the other kids go to the uniform store, right? And they would appreciate if I would follow suit. Ah, so they were like, stop oppressing these kids mm -hmm. with your rich hoity toity. Yeah. Yeah, Sam and when my mom would bring me McDonald's, and they told her she couldn't do that anymore. She would bring you McDonald's to school? Sometimes, yeah. And they were like, nah, you can't do that. <sighs> you spoiled me. I was. <laughs> you, maybe you were possessed by that. <laughs> um, so, where are we? 8.30 on uh, Thursday night. What are you going with? Living Single. Now, Living Single, I loved. Loved great. it. Great. It was a great show. But those characters seem real. I get like it. Martin. You know, Martin no, was Martin was cartoony. just I, Martin was just strictly comic relief. Like, yeah. Like I thought it was just a lot. Like I loved David Allen Gray as Reverend Lonnie Love. I liked David Allen Gray too, but it, I feel like Martin had no heart. I could see That's that. That's what bothered me. I could see that. It had no heart. It seemed like a very superficial show. I could see that. And living single, I was like, these people are friends. This makes sense. Their relationships mm -hmm. make sense. And, and going along with the other choices you've made, I yeah. could see why you would need that in yeah. the show. Yeah. I think if something was just purely comedic. Whereas I like home improvement. So you can see why I yes, don't yes, need that Yes, yes, You don't need that. And living <laughs> single, and I still, contend, I still contend that living single was ripped off by NBC, who made friends. Which is yeah. white living single. That yeah. is all it is. And you know what? Now we're back to being friends, Ken, because I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's a mm -hmm. complete rip off of it Living is. Single. It's not as good as Living Single in any way. Yeah, that's and it never right, got the it? audience that Living Single got. And Living Single was a better show. Yeah, it was. It was a, a quality better... show. And yeah. I do miss that time in television where like Fox was perpetuating like quality black shows. You but know? I think it wasn't by design. I think it was because no one else was. Yeah. They saw a market they could make money. Right. And but it, but even like like, even now, there's, even back then with movies, I just felt like even the black movies that were coming out were, like, better. You know, even now, it's like, yeah. you get, like, a lot of, like, I don't know. This is Soul the, Plane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's just, it's like, the, the it was like, they were really... I think we've gone backwards in a lot of ways. Right. I think, I think in the 70s, you had, well, it actually goes back to the 1930s. You had these movies called race movies mm. that were all black cast movies. And... Some of them were good because no one was... Like Carmen and stuff like that? Uh, no, like you had Westerns with all black mm. casts. You had this movie called The Bronze Buckaroo. Mm. You had pretty much any genre, but with all black actors. Mm -hmm. And to a degree, some of the movies ended up being great because they were also sort of produced by black people right. for a black audience. And so it was, um, you know, we're just making good movies. And then once you started getting into like the seventies black exploitation, a lot of those were made by white people mm -hmm. with an all black cast. And it right. was here's what we think black audiences want. want. And then you have people who grow up on that and it becomes what they want. Exactly. So you kind of had people that grew up with that in the seventies and it That's was That's how I felt about B T. <clears throat> yeah. It was, it was like B T was a good channel when Bob Johnson owned it. Yeah. And you had like Teen Summit and you had yeah. programs that- It was that, smart. It was smart. Yeah. And then MTV bought it and they were like, this is what black Here's people like. Here's what you like. want. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, no, like there's no more BT News. They took that but away. But the problem is, like, I think that if you do that long enough, it does become what Right. That's want. what I'm saying. And now it's like, yeah, this is what we want. Yeah. But it's like, because the option- Well, in the 90s you had, I mean, like Poetic Justice, you had, uh, you know, John Singleton and yeah. the Hughes Brothers and all these amazing black uh, directors mm -hmm. and writers and Spike Lee I never he was always pretty clownish uh, right. but you know was one of the first guys that sort of set that mm -hmm. path uh, going but you had them making serious interesting movies right. and then I think the thing that sort of started to change that was like the Friday movies mm -hmm. and you started seeing it switch with like Friday and yeah, but, Barbershop but, but, it, it was, was still so interesting the, yeah cause I'm like Friday was such a good movie the first one the first one yeah the first uh, we can get 10 on this well, it Friday starts after to next, slide Friday After Next is pretty amazing but it starts to slide <laughs> Friday After Next is pretty amazing it might be my favorite friday yeah um, but it was so fun
funny, you know, yeah. and it was good. But and you it was can like, see the the yeah. tone shift if yeah. you watch them. Like yeah. that's a good example of something coming out of that nineties wave. Like you had a movie called um, called uh, Tales from the Hood. Yeah, which was terrible. But it was it was, it was good. good. It was well made. I, I was mean, scared. You know, stuff. Yeah, but I was it was scared. a smart movie. I was scared of the, uh, the the one with the dolls. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah the vo- little voodoo dolls. Yeah, you know, like Fear of a Black Hat and mm-hmm. CB4, mm-hmm. which were like Spinal Tap, right. really funny, smart movies, um, and like Hollywood Shuffle and yeah. all these things. Dope. And then you get like White Girls, yeah, and Soul Plane, right, and Little Man, right, and then Medea like takes over, and uh, it was just terrible. They're terrible. They're I awful. totally agree. And it's like, why, why are we? Buying bothering with this I don't know and that's that's what stinks but I think what happened at Fox then was they said hey look we don't we need to be a network different from the other three networks. Mm-hmm. We also don't have a lot of money. So a lot of people got a chance to do something interesting. Right. And you had shows created by and starring black people yeah. that weren't sort of being run by a person who says, here's the black show I would like. Right. And you got stuff like Rock. And you got stuff like Living Single. And, and I think Martin. it's also this idea like with, uh, and then we can, we're talking about this a lot, but I think it's also this idea of um, like people kind of like age out and aren't doing the work. And it's yeah. just like this whole like letting one black person at a time do stuff. Right. So it's like you know what I mean. We're, we're only gonna do once these... that person's gone. Right. And someone else gets. Because I'm thinking it, like, oh, like we had Boomerang, we had this, we had that. But I'm yeah. like, damn, so much of that stuff Eddie Murphy was behind. Yeah, and he then, had his own production company, and yeah. Boom. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I think that plays a role in it too. Yeah, you have less people being the tastemakers. It's like if Adam Sandler was the only white guy making stuff. Right. Basically, <laughs> you would be like, oh no. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, Little Man's just as yeah, bad as that's whatever. what I'm saying. And, but yeah. we have like who, like two or three people that are making things. And it's yeah. like the Wayne's and Tyler Perry. So if, if you're not being filtered through one of these two, yeah. either yeah. through him producing it, backing it, or right. writing it, right. then it's like... Pfft. Yeah, and you wonder why there, there's less opportunities because those are established people. And even Tyler Perry sort of established himself in the mid-90s. Right. So, you know, when's... Who's the new person? Right, there's right. not been anyone to come take the mantle of that mm-hmm. stuff. And, and, you know, I wish there wasn't a mantle. It would just get stuff. But, I mean, it, you know, I, I think there's less stuff being made generally. And there's less risks being taken. Right. So they're making things that they think will make money. Yep. And because Soul Plane made money, they're going to make yeah, Soul Plane Yeah, it's like, too, if we go or, and, wa- yeah. and we support it, then... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Living Single, great show. This is an awesome show. Um, Loved everything about it. Oh, I absolutely did, too. And I watched it the whole time. Great, com- great comedic timing with Overton and... Um, well, the, anybody he would really interact with but yeah, it, was just, it was such a good ensemble cast yeah. like it was a really great ensemble cast and on the Thursday night in 94 it was directly against Friends mm. it was up against Friends mm. and I remember I watched it every week and kids would watch Friends and on Friday I was like you're dumb <laughs> no one agreed with me no one agreed with me uh, so 9 o'clock would you go with New York Undercover really did you watch this every week yes so this is after a popular college student is killed, Williams and Torres discover that the deceased had been selling marijuana and had also a juvenile record. Mm. So you like these police procedural shows? Um, New York Undercover was dope because New York Undercover incorporated hip hop, the hip hop culture, with right. like a cop detective drama, okay. with like urban stories, like yeah. stuff that would happen like in your neighborhood. You so know in this case, it's the exact opposite of everything else you were yeah. watching. Yeah. Okay. It's like, you know, like, they would have that club that they would go to at the end, Estelle's yep. or something like that, and it would be like Mary J. Blige is performing, yeah, this yeah. is performing, and that one's performing. So you had that aspect of like the music I was listening to at right. the time, and then like they would dress Tommy Hilfiger and like so this was like you're my so called yeah, <laughs> like they were Tommy Hilfiger and stuff, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. then it was like these were interesting stories, like stories I could relate to, but it was still I thought the acting was good. Yeah, this um, was definitely a quality show. I mean, yeah, it's a good show. I thought it was a great show, and, and the little really- side stories were good, like Malik Yoba, I mean, and his yeah. son. G and the then with the mother arc, yeah. and the ongoing arc of that and the father with the being the booze dude with it's the drugs. It's a show that doesn't get a lot of love these days and it was one of the best shows of that crop of police yeah. procedurals that now everyone's like uh, you know um, uh, Homicide and yeah. uh, Law and Order they all kind of started around the same time and I do think New York Undercover Cover was probably the best right. of those and the shows. intros were always dope like the beginning yeah. was always hard it would be like the music the crime, would, yeah. The, yeah the music would be ill yeah, and yeah. you just see like a footstep in a puddle right, right. Right. <laughs> like something drop on the ground you're like oh yeah it's gonna yeah. be crazy and again a show that had a very of its time aesthetic but in a good way yeah it makes it not seem as dated yeah really. it was it was dope i remember one um episode torres had a tommy hilfiger shirt that i had definitely wore that to school okay. the next i definitely yeah. wore that to school the next Did day anyone was like, everyone was like oh you got the torres, torres. Oh, really <laughs> so everybody at school watched it yeah fair enough uh i would have watched seinfeld 
far this is from great. New York we're just, we're just yeah. on like opposite sides. Well, Seinfeld, you could probably call New York overcover. <laughs> Our Thursdays are like... Oh, yeah, they're very different. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we're watching Living Single. We we're are. We're both watching Living Single. Uh, this one, Kramer Furo's a golf dispute has pushed his opponent to murder. George gets no credit for buying Elaine's lunch. Jerry dates a woman whom Newman rejected. You know what's absolutely hilarious about, like, I love Seinfeld, right? But it's another show I didn't start watching until I was older. Right. But we had this friend, my friend, uh, Anthony Schofield, right? We, lived, we all, you know, lived in the same neighborhood. And he would constantly talk about how hilarious Seinfeld was. Right. And he'd be like, you guys don't watch Seinfeld? Your show's dumb. Like, it's right, great. Right. And we'd be like, yo, who's, it's New York Undercover Hour. Like, yeah. everybody Why in the neighborhood is all on one accord. Yeah. We watch New York Undercover. Like, no one's watching Seinfeld. And one day we were all playing basketball. And he was like, I dip my head in oil and rub it all over the body. And we were like, what are you talking He's about? He's quoting Seinfeld. And he was like, George Costanza, Seinfeld. Yeah. We're like, yo, what? And then when I got older, I got into it. I was like, oh, no, he's right. This show is absolutely yeah, great. Yeah, it is good. I mean, I do think it doesn't hold up as well. It's a really dated show. It's like one of the most 90s shows. Yeah. And when I've tried to rewatch it as an adult, I'm You like, know what? Mm. I couldn't. I tried to last week. I was like, oh, I'm about to just watch Mad Seinfeld. As... I had smoked a J, and I was like, this is going to be great. And I was just like, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't get wrong. <laughs> I was like, uh, mm. So 930, you're still watching. You're yeah, still watching this. To uh, ten. I would watch Mad Men of the People, which was Dabney Coleman's uh, yet another failed attempt at a sitcom for Dabney Coleman. Um Good show, good show. And in 10, I definitely would watch ER. Love. I watched ER for like the first eight seasons every single week. Loved I knew it. it was a thing, but I wasn't watching it. Fair enough. Uh, Friday night, the final night of the week, 8 Friday, o'clock, what are you going with? I have four letters, T-G-I-F. That's all I'm doing. I don't need to turn the channel. You're locked into ABC. That's it. TGIF. So 8 o'clock, you're watching Family Matters. Of course. A show that I liked the first two seasons, and by the time it became the Urkel show, absolutely despised. No, love it. See, I, I couldn't stand it. What is wrong with you? Well, because like, here's the who thing. Who doesn't like Stefan or Cal? That was the worst. That was, what? So here's my problem with it. Now, the show started <laughs> no, as a good blue-collar sitcom about a family. <laughs> this is your thing. You like these uh these core family yeah yeah i mean it's a show about a family and the, after the end of the first season the stupid neighbor comes in and now the show becomes about this nerdy <laughs> black kid and who invents a time machine <laughs> and a body swapping machine Come and on. Book, oh it's just Stefan awful. Urkel oh, but the, here's the other thing about Stefan Urkel that really bothered me Jaleel White is a nerd he's a nerdy dude and so <laughs> he would go on every single tv show he could go on and be like well it's a character and I'm not really like that at all so it's so funny that I'm Urkel because that's totally not like me <laughs> which is not true and then he made them make the Stefan Urkel character so that he could be like this is like the real me it's oh he kind forced of it yeah oh it still was great oh, I was all about Stefan Urkel this one is the conclusion of a two-parter uh, unwilling to go on as Stefan Urkel yep Steve is intent on changing back into his old mm -hmm. self whether it pleases Laura, Laura or, or not. not and I'm definitely watching this one like I was waiting all week for this it's right. like like what I'm doing. I'm waiting all week for the conclusion of the Stefan Arcal. I mean, I drama. understand. Because a part of me wanted Stefan to stay. Right. But a part of me was like, no, nah, man, you got to be Urkel, man. You got to be yourself, so man. so annoying. Urkel was so great. Annoying. I couldn't stand him. Couldn't stand him. Like, I wanted Mr. Winslow to just And I was him. so glad when he got Myra. I was so happy for him. I was uh, like, yeah, she's dope. She's, she's got better. big boobs. So you're a hater. <laughs> so you're saying, you're saying that Urkel... Could do better than Laura. <laughs> I am. That's what you're saying. I am. I'm hating from the opposite side of Jeez. the fence. Jeez, fair enough. <laughs> I would have gone with Baywatch. Absolutely Baywatch. I knew it was a thing. Baywatch was a hilarious show. <laughs> uh, it's about lifeguards doing stuff. Yeah. And this one, Mitch learns that his captors plan to kill him whether or not he saves Brady. And Stephanie investigates a diving, in quotes, accident involving the fiancé of her sister. That beach was crazy, man. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on at that beach. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely well upset. Uh, so 8.30, you're going with Boy Meets World? Of course. So this episode uh, is a frustrated Corey consults his brother to on his quest to find a date. Let's talk about boy. First of all, Ben will never be Fred. I'm just no, gonna put that Fred's out there. Better. Fred's Fred better. Fred is better. Be better. Have you seen Little Monsters? That yes, and together? he was in it. Yeah, and they're both in that. Fred's just better. For some reason, whenever I hear the name Brian, I can't not repeat it in the same way that Ben Savage says <laughs> Brian in Little Monsters. Like when he's all grimy, yeah. he goes Brian. <laughs> like anyone's like, oh, my name's Brian. I. It takes every bit of my being to not go Brian. No I, one would know. <laughs> I love Little Monsters, and I, I loved Wonder Years. I love, love, love yeah, Wonder Years. Yeah, they're a great show. 
And um, Boy Meets World is not the one. To use. I, watched, I think that was my problem with it. Yeah, I watched Boy Meets World because he was kin to Fred, and yeah. out of my respect and love for Fred, yeah, I watched it. And I think a lot of people did, and I don't think Ben gives Fred enough credit for that because I think a lot of people our age did. Yeah, I think a lot of people our age were like, "Hey, yeah, you're Fred's little brother. Yeah, I'll we'll give, give you a, a chance. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what you got. Good family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, quality people. And it was it was decent. It was okay. It was I think probably, I like the younger the younger years than the older. Oh, it got awful when it was older. Yeah, the when he was trying to like marry seasons, her yeah. and all that Garbage. stuff. Garbage. I feel like the young, like with Minkus and yeah, like, yeah. all that stuff going because on. Because the last, the, the first three seasons were, were more of a sitcom about a kid. Mm-hmm. And later it became a friend's rip off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a flat out friend's yeah. rip off. Yeah. And, and I really got tired of Sean. Let's just yeah, be honest. Yeah. I was just getting tired of his shit. It's like, you can't get it together, Sean. And he's all it's, like, you could tell that actor's like, I know I'm a hard Yeah. Guy. But and he was a goofy looking kid. And it was always just something with this kid. It was like, come the fuck on, Sean. I will say it was at this time of TGIF was by far the best show in the lineup. Mm-hmm. I would say that that's mm-hmm. without question. Mm-hmm. And even no, as a diehard no. Family Matters fan, you're no. not talking about that. No. No. I, no. I was going to, but no, because Stefan Arkell's going on right now. Oh, dear. Let's move on to 930. <laughs> Let's, uh, 9 o'clock. Let's just move on to 9 o'clock. We're going to have to agree or disagree. Step by step. Yeah, I'm watching it. I, I like Cody. It. Oh, someone told me that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> First of all, Someone I told like me, Cody. In eighth grade, someone told me that I reminded them of Cody. Oh, that's not good. Not good. Uh, JT <laughs> goes on a spending spree JT, I like yeah, JT. with his first credit card, and a professor teaches Dana a lesson in humanity. When I like he those. English paper. I like Dana. I like Dana. I like Cody. I like JT. I no. like the dad. Dana's the only one I like. I'm into the whole show. Cody living in the van. I like Stacey Keenan. I would have been watching X-Files. There's no question about it. Too scared. Yeah. See, Too I loved scared. it. I loved it. Can this I tell you my... Oh. Such a good X-Files episode. Can I, yes. Yeah, I got an X-Files story. All right, so <laughs> I'm freaked out by aliens. Period. Yeah. Do you believe it's in aliens? A, I do, but in a weird. I don't know. It's, it's outer like, space, not illegal. Yeah. Okay. And it's and it's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's um. I don't know. I've just always been a kid. I was always scared of aliens. Like okay. it was always a thing. Did you see those like kidnapping specials and think right. they were gonna come yep. kidnap you? Exactly. Okay. I saw those. Like, dude, they took yeah, me yeah. and they stuck yeah. something in my leg. Yeah. And I was like, oh, now what was that movie with the thing in the eye and that whole thing? Oh yeah, thing? fire, fire uh, in the sky. Yeah. yeah. Freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. I'm petrified of aliens. I'm like, but I'm like kind of sometimes trying to sneak and watch like X Files when it comes on late. You right, know? Right, right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Oh. Fox would re air X Files yeah, on like Saturday night at ten something. or eleven. Yeah. yeah. So I try to watch it and then. And, like be all freaked out by the music and stuff. Yeah. So I'm like convinced at some point I convinced myself around 12 that aliens have actually abducted me. And I you don't thought you'd been abducted. Listen, by aliens? Okay. I don't, but I don't remember. But I like would feel this throbbing in my leg, which I know is just like blood moving. Yeah. Or just you know uh, growing pains. Right. But yeah. I thought it was a trekker. So <laughs> I convinced myself that I'm being tracked by these aliens and I'm like, I'm not even really sleeping at night because I'm like, oh my God, they're going to come back right. and like do more stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, my mom used to have these parties and um, I had... Tupperware parties? Like, all my aunts would come over, drink wine, oh, okay. and, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. And um, she came in my room while I was in the bathroom and she looked at my pillow and she found a knife and a hammer under my pillow. Okay. And so she was just like, you know, who is doing something to you? So my mom is like super protective. She thought someone was touching you. Jumps right to yeah. somebody is touching me. And yeah. she's like, I don't care who it is. It could be like your uncle. Yeah. Even if it's your brother, you tell me which, right now. I love your mom. Yeah, yeah which is great. great. Yeah. It's a great parenting. Yeah. Immediately goes to it. Also lets yeah. me know, hey, it doesn't matter who the person yeah. is. It's not you, your fault. It's not, yeah. You just need to be honest. Why would you be sleeping with these things? Like yeah. immediately on it. And she's like, you know, just go. And I'm like, mom, no, nothing, nothing is happening. Yeah. So she's like, well, why do you have these things? Like she presents them to me. Like, well, what do you Look, have I understand for? the hammer, <laughs> but with the knife. She's like, what's going on with you? And so I proceeded to tell her how I think aliens are going to abduct me. Right. And if you could see the disappointment, like, I think she almost wished I was being molested. Because it would be easier to do Because it would make, like, yeah. Like well, she's, she probably didn't know what to do with that. Yeah, she was just you looking know? at me like, I made you. Like, you yeah. came out of me. But also, I don't, you know, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> have been that it was probably like look if it had been someone's touching you i would have known what to do yeah we'd go to the police we'd but, deal with it right i have a plan if you're like i think aliens have abducted me as a parent she's probably like i don't know how to process that right like, i don't know how to make that better for you right i don't so know how to just fix like, it when did you realize that they hadn't well the next day when i woke up my tv was gone she took my tv out my room in the uh, middle of the night and she left me a note basically saying until i can 
you know, tell the difference between reality and well, I think that's television. Fair. Like, so clearly, not I need that to take TV. a break from the television. For Do you a know while. a specific show that made you? think It was that? just a lot of combination. I mean, it was of big at the things. time. Yeah, it was like, on there would talk be shows. Little, right, yeah. there was talk shows about it, and there'd be yeah. little like little side yeah. specials about oh, yeah. it, and, like autopsy and, and History Channel's yeah. just like, yeah, they've been here seventeen times in the last twenty yeah. years, yeah. and like it was just a lot of stuff. So she took the TV out, and then you go, oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. She takes TV out, and I'm like, maybe I'm crazy. I gotta watch. Was that the year he took off from Matter <laughs> Maybe that's the year. That's the day I gotta take a it break. It was enforced. It was enforced. <laughs> well, there was that alien abduction plot one on Matter 2 Well, X Files that night is a small town is rocked by a series of sudden violent killing sprees by individual residents who are killed by police when they refuse to halt their actions. Uh, William Sanderson is in this, who is a great, uh, great character actor. Um, Also, adult film actress Ashlyn Gear is in this, who was a huge porno actress in the 80s and 90s. And this was a huge deal. They made a huge deal out of her making a mainstream acting role. Mm. And she actually is a pretty good actress. And she was in one other non pornographic role. Which was a which was a uh, a horror movie called uh, Creepazoids, mm. which is not a great movie. But I remember at this time when this episode aired, there was like Entertainment Tonight stories and all the stuff about how this woman was gonna break through and and be a legit actress, and then it just never happened. It doesn't never happen. ever happen really for them. Well, Tracy Lord's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, she's good in this episode. She's very very good. This is a really great episode of X Files. No aliens. Mm. Uh, no Sometimes there weren't aliens. Yeah, there was those were easier things. to there was those were easier to deal with. Fair enough. Uh, Pete the dog is yelling at us. So nine thirty, you're going with Hang on, Mr. Cooper. Yep. I like that show. I like that show. Mm-hmm. I liked Mark Curry. Um, Holly so, Robinson wait, was watching... my favorite though. Step Did by we skip step. nine? Oh no, step by step. Yeah, yeah. step by steps at nine. Yep, Hang Mr. Cooper. Hang on, this yep. is when Mark learns that Nicole is doing a fifth grade bully's homework. He wants to teach the kid a lesson, but it's Geneva who ch- closes the book on the subject. I liked Geneva. She yeah. didn't take no mess. No, of course not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked Holly Robinson because I was a yeah, big fan of Twenty One Jump. Yeah, she was cute. Yeah. Uh, I liked Mark Curry. Yeah, yeah, he was a funny stand-up. Mm-hmm. He's one of those. That's people, say he was a funny stand-up. I remember him from stand-up. I, yeah, I would see him. He would stand out on a yeah. show that I would see him. Yeah, on. yeah I like Mark absolutely. Curry. So that was good. Well, Sam. We're at the end of our week. Yeah. And as you know, TV Guide is not just informative. It cheers and it jeers. It has opinions. <laughs> so I'm going to read you the cheers and jeers from that week. It is a cheer. It is a jeer-heavy week. We're mm. three jeers, two chairs this week. I'll read you them and see if you agree or disagree. Okay. So first we have a cheer. Though faintly to a trend we've been fighting for so long that we finally are giving in, movies based on TV series. And then goes on to talk about how great the Brady Bunch movie is mm-hmm. and Sergeant Bilko. And I can go with that. Mm-hmm. The Brady Bunch movie's great. Yeah. You said you enjoyed Bill I like Sergeant Bill Maybe because I never saw the original. The original's amazing. So it was just it was it was great and funny to me. Yeah, McKill's Navy. Uh jeers to a group called Viewers Against the Nanny. Oh, come on, the nanny? Sure, Fran Drescher's Queen's Bray may make the screech of a subway train. Why have a bunch of Drescher dishers? People hated the nanny. Yeah. I didn't get into the nanny until it was in syndication, but yeah. I liked it. I don't know. I could, uphold that right. I could uphold that jeer. I like the parents. Uh, jeers to King World for its Ted Turner-like plans to colorize the 71 episodes of The Little Rascals. I don't mm. really like The Little Rascals, and I, I kind of don't care. Yeah, it's like, who cares? Yeah. I don't even think that needed to be written about. Then we have uh, cheers to MTV for paying some medical expenses and hospital expenses of uninsured real-world cast member Pedro Zamora. Well, that's just the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and then NBC, uh, they paid for a, a, a stagehand got killed on the Today Show. Mm. Uh, he was actually killed by the guy who beat up um, uh, Tom Brokaw when was saying, "What's the frequency count?" Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. same guy Whoa. killed this dude, and uh, NBC paid for all this stuff. And finally, jeers to Rush Limbaugh for demanding an apology from She TV for lampooning him. What's mm, She TV? She TV was a sketch comedy <laughs> show. Uh, it was all women. Oh, uh, I think it was I don't on Fox. It, it was an okay sketch show. I don't remember that. Yeah, they, they made fun of Rush Limbaugh. So who cares? Yeah, I don't care about Shut that. up, Rush Limbaugh. Well, Sam. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing the show. This was fun. We did it. It would happen. It was great. Sam J. She may or may not be possessed by the devil and may or may not have been abducted. 
by aliens. The world will never know. She is very funny. As always, I will put all of her social media links up on tvguidancecounselor.com, and you can reach me there. You can reach me at tvguidancecounselor at gmail.com or canadaicanread.com, and you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. I love hearing from you guys, and we'll see you again next Wednesday for an all-new episode of TV Guidance Counselor. I wasn't Catholic, which was a big deal. One point they told my mother I was possessed by the devil. Really? Two really? nuns held me, and the other one tried to like put it in my mouth. Oh, I'd be cool as hell. They'd be yeah. like Zach Morris. Or, Why are you disappointed in me? And yeah. you just don't want your daughter to get screwed.